Welcome to ESPN College Football, presented by Cars.com. A familiar entrance for the Canes at the Orange Bowl. A ceremony that will move to Dolphin Stadium next year. Only three games remain at the 70-year-old facility, including today against Georgia Tech. 35 seconds away from kickoff between these two ACC Coastal Division schools with Andre Ware and Aaron Andrews. I'm Dave Pash. And Georgia Tech beat Miami at the Orange Bowl two years ago. To win today, Andre, the Jackets will rely on ACC's leading rusher for the second straight year, Tashard Choice. Yeah, he's the workhorse of this Georgia Tech offense. 32 carries in each of the last two games. Had a string of nine consecutive 100-yard performances snap a couple of weeks ago, but he's right back on pace with 200-yard performances the last two weeks. He's a complete back. This Georgia Tech offense runs through Tashard Choice. They lead the ACC in rushing. Miami struggled against North Carolina to stop the run last week. Humid as usual here in Miami. Chance of rain 40%. Could reach 90 degrees by the end of the game, but there is a stiff breeze going right to left. Chan Gailey, his team has lost three of the last four. They were ranked 15th prior to that skid and lost by two to Maryland last week. He actually worked in South Florida as the offensive coordinator for Dave Wanstead with the Dolphins earlier this decade. And yeah, Randy Shannon was on that staff as well as a defensive assistant. So both head coaches at both these fine universities have coached before, but today they are on opposite sidelines. And Randy Shannon's team coming off a loss as well to North Carolina on the road. Taking a knee is Sean Bray McNeil, and Miami will start at the 20-yard line. Right now, we're going to check in down on the field with Aaron Andrews. Well, Dave, the message on Georgia Tech's sidelines during pregame warm-ups, do not hit the snooze button. They have good reason for that. You see, in their past two games that started at noon, they're 0-2, and then in the first quarter, they've been outscored 35-10. to Senior safety Jamal Lewis told me, we're a team on game days that like to wake up at about 11 or 12, but today we need to be energized. Hey, I walked around during pregame here at the OB they like to play that club music guys were dancing enjoying themselves I heard they were pretty much awake today <laughs> and you were dancing too so yeah. was Andre up here doing that <laughs> hand over the face thing Kyle Wright going deep on first down the pass under thrown incomplete intended for Darnell Jenkins who had a step on Avery Roberson now for Georgia Tech's defensive starters here's Philip Wheeler all right coming to you live from the bottom of the map we got Georgia Tech defense. Up front, we got the machine, Adam Oliver. We got Robo, Daryl Roberson. We got scary, frightening Gary Guyton at linebacker. Also at safety, J. Lou. What him up, J. Lou? And Avery Robertson, straight out of the west side of Atlanta. Only one team has run for over 100 yards against that defense this year, and they are second in the country in sacks. Trying to put pressure on right here, but he has a throwing lane, and again going deep. And incomplete again, intended for Sam Shields, but a flag down interference going to be called on Word Daniels, who got beat twice last week for big plays. Well, Dave, this Georgia Tech defense have given up a lot of big plays in the last couple of weeks, and Miami going to test them two times in a row, once against Avery Passing Roberson. Players, 32 of the defense, 15 yards from previous spot. Automatic first down. And then against J. Ward Daniels on the uh, same sideline, they must have saw something in film study that allowed him to go there, try to go over the top against this Georgia Tech defense early. There's John Tenuta. This fire zone blitzing scheme last year against Miami, they forced four turnovers and sacked Kyle Wright six times, but have, haven't been able to get any pressure on him in the first two plays. Now, Word Daniels was beat twice last week by Maryland. First down from the 35, right looking deep again. Same thing, three times in a row, and again it's underthrown. And Word Daniels knocks it down. Now for Miami's offensive starters, here's one of their biggest fans. Hey, it's Rock, here to tell you about the Canes' explosive offense. First, trigger man Kyle Wright will be looking to hit the deep threat Darnell Jenkins. They hooked up on a 97-yard score last week. When our opposing team's going to learn that pinning us on our own three-yard line only makes us angry. And in the backfield, look out for Edge's cousin, Javaris James. Like Edron, odd first names, but a mighty powerful game. And in the trenches, the O-line is anchored by 344-pound senior Andrew Bain, a psychology major with a minor in smacking the taste right out of your mouth. So you might want to cover up. 
all in there. Penalty flag on the play. You know, we tried to get Rock to go a little bit quicker, but Andre was afraid of him, and yeah. I had to step in and say, you know, leave Dre alone. Hey, wasn't going to mess with the Rock, man. You may get body slammed and, you know, come off the top Outside, turnbuckle slides. on you. 93 the defense. Five-yard penalty. Second down. I told him I was going to have to body slam if he went three seconds longer. longer. <laughs> well, I'm going to leave that for you. Certain things I got your back on, but when it's the Rock, you're on your own. Randy Shannon coached uh, the Rock uh, when he was a defensive lineman here at Miami. Pretty good one. Yeah. One point was starting ahead of Warren Sapp, and, and Sapp ended up beating out the Rock, and the rest is history. For Sapp, who was a high school tight end, says Randy Shannon. A running play here on second down. First running play of the day, and Javaris James, Edron James' cousin, wears the same number five that Edge did. Yeah, rushed for over 800 yards last year as a true freshman, only the second hurricane to do so since uh, Clinton Portis with 838 yards rushing as a true freshman. He is a talented guy. They've got a big stable of running backs here. Craig Coop, Greg Cooper, uh, Denarian, Duran Thomas, I'm sorry, as well as uh, Sean Barry McNeil. They go very, very deep at the tailback position. Randy Shannon told us yesterday that if Miami's in third and six or less, he's comfortable with that. Here's pressure up the middle, and Wright gets it away, but it's incomplete. That was Michael Johnson right in the face of Kyle Wright. Well, they like to bring pressure with that fire zone defense, and they get it from the defensive end. Michael Johnson, you'll see him right up the middle of the screen on Kyle Wright, and I talked to Patrick Nix yesterday. I said, what'd you tell Kyle Wright this week? He said, hey, you better get rid of the football. See things in the pre-snap read, and then get the football out. He did that time, but incomplete. So Matt Bosher, who had a punt blocked against North Carolina last week, booting it away to Tyler Evans, and a short kick. Takes several Miami hops, though. It'll be down to the 13 yard line. Now for Miami's defensive starters. Here he is again, a former U defender. Hey, it's Rock here to tell you about Coach Shannon's fierce D. Up front in the pit, Taraz McCray is a big time disruptor, whose hobbies include plucking the wings off of Yellow Jackets just to hear them scream. And in the middle, Tavares Gooden, as in good enough to give your lung back once he knocks it right out of your chest. And if you're lucky enough to get past those guys, you'll have to deal with safety Kenny Phillips, the hardest hitting DB in America. And for those who don't know, DB stands for defensive back. But in the case of Georgia Tech, it stands for don't bother. As in don't bother showing up because you're about to get pasted and made into honey. Trust me. It's a Canes thing. You wouldn't, wouldn't understand. understand. <laughs> he could have gone on for another 30 oh, minutes. Yeah. Uh, you, you tell me he's not passionate about this Miami U, this hurricane uh, program? Absolutely. It's amazing Randy Shannon talking about all the former players that still come back, including the Rock, and support this football team. Four-yard pickup for Tashard Choice on first down. And he'll get it again on the inside running play, and he's got a lane to the outside. And Choi steps out at the 34. That's a gain of about 17 and a first down. For Georgia Tech's offensive starters, here is Tashar Choice. Starting today for the goal squad at quarterback, we have my man TB. At fullback, we have Bull, the Matador. At receiver, we have Greg, Mr. Burns, Smith, and Bebe. The chicken pot pie boys up front. We have Kevin Tuminello and my man Gardner. Jamal Prayer go out to you and your family. The pot and pot boys. He's talking about uh, Jamal Evans, whose sister was in a car accident earlier this week and did yeah. not make the trip. So uh, Georgia Tech players uh, in prayer about that situation. Running play nets just one there for choice. Yeah, the strength of this Miami defense, the defensive line, the front seven, along with the linebackers, they try to get pressure from just the front four guys, and they will try that before they go to a blitz package. Now, on the other side, you get to talk about Georgia Tech defensively. They will come with different blitzes from everywhere, but this Hurricane defensive front is where they like to get their pressure. Blowing teams out here at home. Texas A&M, one of those opponents. They've won five straight here. They've lost five in a row on the road, and Randy Shannon says that he can't understand it. Choice, maybe one to the 37 tackled by Moncur. The other thing Randy Shannon said is 
after the North Carolina game, he doesn't think that a lot of his players believe and trust the coaches in terms of what they're telling them about being intense on every play. Yeah, I think it just boils down to execution. I'm not sure that it's it's a, a deal where they don't believe. They believe in the coaching staff. They've just got to execute better. At certain times in a game, they have the letdowns. They cannot afford the letdowns. Otherwise, they find themselves in a situation like last week against North Carolina. Yeah, down 27 nothing at half in that game. Came back to lose. Made it close to choice out of the backfield on third down and long. Picks up the first down. He is dangerous as a receiver. It's his 11th catch, and it's a first down for Georgia Tech, pushed out by Willie Cooper. Yeah, Willie Cooper's got to go attack to Shard Choice. Good job with the eyes by Taylor Bennett. The use shows a little zone coverage. He picks up his safety valve to Shard Choice, and that's who you want to have in the open field. And you see Willie Cooper waiting on to Shard Choice. Guess what? You got to go get him to bring him down short of the first down marker. You let that guy get ahead of steam, you're in trouble. Choice, an excellent back, senior, perhaps the best senior running back in the country. We're Sean Grant into the game. Play fake and Bennett, the southpaw, trying to dump it off to Mike Cox, and it's incomplete. A last night, great game between Hawaii and San Jose. With more on that, here is Reese Davis in the studio. All right, guys, Hawaii appeared that they were in a world of trouble, but in overtime, Colt Brennan, who threw four picks on the game, also threw four interceptions. He was 44, and also four touchdowns, I should say, 44 75. And then the interception by Myron Newberry of Adam Trafalis and June Jones and Colt Brennan pulled one out in overtime, 42 to 35. Well, that one went down to the wire, saw bits and pieces of that game. Colt Brennan had to fight to get his. Her, uh, Hawaii team back in. Here's Bennett on second and ten and throws it away. Four interceptions last night for Colt Brennan, but four touchdown passes. So does his Heisman hopes improve or do they take a hit based on what They've you taken saw? Last a hit. Night? He's had a four interception performance, and I guess like a week or so ago had a five interception uh, performance. I think his Heisman chances have really, really taken a hit. Man, threw for uh, what, 550 some yards uh, last night? And brought his team back, but did throw a pick that was returned for a score first play of the second half. I think the thing that attracts you is that earlier in the year he wasn't throwing those interceptions. Now he's doing it, and, and certainly the uh, the naysayers will point to that as uh, they, they start to think about the vote for the Heisman Trophy. Here's Taylor Bennett, only two interceptions thrown this year, and that's incomplete. The arm going forward as he was hit back at the 42-yard line by Vegas Franklin. They're Leading sacker with five on the year. All right, holding it a little bit too long, and we just talked about the U wanting to bring the defensive front to use pressure to get to Taylor Bennett. You're going to see Vegas Franklin right there. He arrives along with uh, Calais Campbell, Therese McCray. Those front four guys get tremendous pressure, allowing for different exotic looks in the secondary of this Miami defense. Durant Brooks, one of the best punters in the country. Oh, yeah, he's special. Finalist for the Ray Guy Award last year. Trying to angle it toward the near side. And it went out of bounds. We'll see where they spot it. Up the near sideline. No score early in Miami. Hurricanes will be backed up inside their 15. Uro HD TV. Back at the Orange Bowl, no score early. Miami and Georgia Tech with Andre Ware. I'm Dave Pash, Aaron Andrews here as well. Time once again, Andre, for hardware, software, and in order to beat Georgia Tech, Miami's got to f find a way to stop Phillip Wheeler, something they have not been able to do. Yeah, the theme for the hardware this week is wheels up. Phillip Wheeler, the last two outings against this Miami Hurricane team, two sacks uh, and both in victories. And uh, he's the heart and soul of this defense. He's known around the country as the best blitzing linebacker. Philip Wheeler it can really make it happen. They like to bring him from a lot of different angles, use him in a lot of different ways. He makes it happen for this Georgia Tech, Ye Georgia Tech Yellow Jacket defense. Nice play by his linebacker mate, Gary Guyton, on Javaris James on first down. Wheeler, the team leader in tackles. And Patrick Nix, the offensive coordinator for Miami, who was at Georgia Tech, said you cannot block Philip Wheeler. They could not block him in practice no, he's tough. when he was with the Yellow Jackets. On second and ten, right. 
And out for the first down is the fullback Jarrell Mabry to the 25-yard line. And speaking of Patrick Nix, he is uh, one half of the subject of the software today. Yes, yeah, software today. Two trains in the night. Patrick Nix as well as John Tenuta. Two, the mental chess match that will take place between these two coordinators. Uh, they won't. We were talking to Patrick Nix yesterday. He said he won't budge. They were on the same staff for five years. The last three with Nix as the offensive coordinator. None will change. They will both be stubborn and try to inflict their will on the other. And this is a shock. Kirby Freeman in the game. And a fumble by James. And James somehow got it back. But Kirby Freeman in the game at quarterback. After Randy Shannon told us yesterday, Kyle Wright would play the whole game. Yeah, Vance said, Walker popped it free. He said he was his man right here, just trying to hand it off to Javaris James underneath. They do a pretty good job of getting his hand in there to, to kind of knock it out. Daryl Richard knocks it out of there. And I'll tell you what, James does a pretty good job of just being, being able to get back on the football. A little trickery know. already. Don't know if Kyle Wright was banged up for play, and that's why he came out. Georgia Tech tried to scoop that up instead of just falling on it and it stays with Miami but an eight yard loss. Right on a receiver screen caught at the 20 yard line by Sam Shields and tackled by Wheeler. It'll bring up third down and long. Yeah it looked like one of the defenders along the Georgia Tech defensive line got a little bit of a hand on that tipped it a little bit but Shields Last year had a special NPC computers bowl four receptions over 100 yards and a touchdown and that one he could certainly get down the field stretch you vertically. But they like to get him the football in open space and allow him to work. He was benched earlier this season. Randy Shannon saying he's not afraid to bench players. He'll if bench they're anybody just being mediocre in terms of playing hard on every down. Wright's pass incomplete intended for Mabry would have been well shy of the first down anyway, and so the Hurricanes will have to punt. And you have to ask yourself, with Wright leaving for a play, was that design? Was it because of an injury, or was it because Shannon felt like Wright was just mediocre and he wanted to pull him? I think what Kirby Freeman does is it gives him a, a little bit more athletic ability at the quarterback position. He can move around, and when they came with Javaris James in motion, it was one of those zone reads where you look and give it, and if not, Kirby Freeman was going to keep the football. They want to run him on those types of plays more so than Kyle Wright. Bosher's second bad punt. And return past the 40 yard line Tyler Evans finally run out of play at the 35 yard line by Chris Zellner but excellent starting field position for Georgia Tech after only a 28 yard punt Boy, Chris Zellner a tremendous athlete able to track down the punt returner Tyler Evans along the sideline amazing big tight end running down a punt returner. The game for both these teams in yeah. the ACC. Georgia Tech won this division last year already one and three. And Miami coming up that loss to North Carolina last week. Well, kind of a more of a must win for the Georgia Tech football team at three and three. They've ten consecutive years with a winning record. That's Big a hole for it to shard choice down to the 28. Yeah that is in jeopardy and, and choice. We're going to see a lot of him at the running back position. He is the guy that uh, this offense goes through. He's had some hamstring problems the last couple of weeks. He was a second team all ACC performer last year. See there 22 wasn't, was wasn't available or two wasn't available so he chose the number 22. He started out at Oklahoma and hurt his hamstring and he was ahead of a guy by the name of Adrian Peterson when he got hurt. Peterson took center stage. Uh, yeah we know we know AP. And transferring was choice to Georgia Tech. And on second down, he actually loses a yard. Taraz McCray made the play. Let's go back to the studio and check in with Reese. All right, Dave, Kent State and Ohio State Buckeyes clicking. Todd Beckman was five for five on the drive. Three of the completions to send out your Heartline. Brian Heartline scoring to put the Bucks up. 7-0 in the early going non-conference play. Rutgers and Syracuse, Andrew Robinson hits Mike Williams for the touchdown. This came after Ben Maltovic picked off Mike Teal. The Cuse at home up 7-0 on Rutgers. <laughs> Cuse, a fickled football team. <laughs> play fake and Bennett's pass under thrown. And it is going to be intercepted in the end zone. 
Bruce Johnson picked it off for Miami. Looked as though Greg Smith was going to make a one-handed grab, but then all of a sudden it was Bruce Johnson who got the start today for this Miami Hurricane defense. A sensational interception in the end zone that's going to set up Miami at their own 20-yard line. With 2 million vehicle listings to choose from on cars.com, you can find the right car for you. Blue is. Find the right car for you. Cars.com. Gia Monstar, how can I help you? This is Tiger Woods. I am locked out of my car. It is raining, and I'd rather not use this 9 iron. I can unlock your enclave from here. Monstar can do that? Here you go. <laughs> Yeah, Monstar, how can I help you? Hi, I need directions to the nearest florist immediately. You don't have to be a star to get the OnStar treatment. OnStar, active. Standard on all Buick models. There are some crazy blades out there, so reach for the ultimate balm. Replenishing aftershave balm with Care Protect soothes and repairs the damage from shaving. Only from Nivea for Men. It's Halloween. It must be Saw. Saw 4. The games have just begun. October 26th. Jack Link's Beef Jerky presents Messing with Sasquatch. <laughs> Jack Link's Jerky, feed your wild side. ESPN's College Football is presented by Cards.com. Find the right car for you, Cards.com. And in part by GM's OnStar. Get the OnStar treatment no matter who you are on most GM vehicles for GM drivers. And ESPN Game Plan. See the most college football every Saturday to order call your pay-per-view provider. Good morning. Welcome to the News Cafe. Can I take your order? And you can enjoy a cup of coffee and read the news from all over the world. Everywhere. You know? So far, Miami's offense, nine plays, six yards, six negative plays. Another penalty flag as McNeil gets the carry and breaks free. Being chased by Jamal Lewis and pushed out inside the 40. But you would think this is coming back based on where the penalty flag was thrown. Patrick Nix, the offensive coordinator for Miami, told us that Georgia Tech was going to force you into negative plays. Holding 62 in the offense. Half the distance to the goal. First down. But Nix told us that you can't have too many negative plays. They've already had six, and that essentially is another negative play because of the holding yeah, by Rochford. Well, Rochford was the guy that gets flagged for it, but uh, the, the left tackle, Jason Fox, comes down and throws a nice nice uh, block on the outside. Right here you see the, the offensive line, Andrew Bain, working down the field that frees up the running back, Sean Barry McNeil. Boy, this was costly. A huge, huge penalty when you factor in the yardage gained and now starting this drive from behind the down and distance markers. So first and 20 and Greg Cooper, true freshman from Memphis, who was Mr. Football in Tennessee two years ago, prep school last year. He'll get the call here on first down. And Cooper passed the 15, banged out a play by Roberson after a gain of seven. Boy, he is fast, fast, fast. Had some fumble problems earlier in the year against Texas A&M. Put a couple on the ground, but I'll tell you what, when he turns the corner, they're hitting a player in college football that can catch that young man. Where's the same number that Willis McGahee wore here at Miami? He is number two in the country in rushing among true Frosh. Number one, Pitts LaShawn McCoy. They played together last year at Milford Prep. And Greg Cooper was ahead of LaShawn McCoy at Milford Prep. 
And you and I got a chance to see McCoy earlier this year and special special player. He was terrific on Wednesday and that loss to Navy. Here's Cooper to the other side try to cut it back and wheels up Philip Wheeler there at the 18 no game. Yeah the coaches feel you talk about he's one of the best players in the conference they'll blitz him from a lot of different looks an all American candidate he's an all everything player at linebacker and voted the uh, number one ranked inside linebacker by ESPN's own Mel Kuyper. Philip Wheeler is just a playmaker on the defensive side of the football. So another play of zero yards for Miami's offense. That's essentially eight plays right now yeah. of zero yards or negative for Miami's offense. They got 400 yards or more in the last four games. Right hit as he delivers. Shields on the catch, but well shy of the first down marker. Dragged down by Word Daniels at the 25. And it was Shane Bowen that uh, came on the fire zone blitz. And what you mean by that, there's always someone coming. When they talk fire zone, now it's Shane Bowen coming off the left edge. You're going to see him coming from right here, but they're playing zone behind it. So the fire zone just bringing one extra rusher to create pressure hoping that uh, the offensive line can't pick it up they get there and force Kyle Wright to throw underneath and now the snap it's a fake and it's going to be a first down for Miami past midfield to Ron Thomas who you were talking about earlier another talented running back for the Hurricanes deep in Miami territory on the fake gets the first down yeah Deron Thomas just on the fake a direct snap to Deron Thomas he's going to just wait for things to clear wait for the offensive lineman to engage in blocks up front and now it's just a nice crease right up the middle of the formation for Deron Thomas big play nice gamble that pays off for Randy Shannon and his hurricane offense must have been watching less Miles in LSU last weekend. <laughs> yeah, got tongue twisted there for a, for a second. It was so nice. <laughs> 27 yards, and now Kirby Freeman back in the game at quarterback for Kyle Wright, a better runner of the two, and that's what they're going to do here. Freeman able to slip one tackle, but not the next. Shane Bowen on the stop, missed tackle by Richard as we bring Aaron Andrews in. Well, Dave, just to add about the switching of the quarterbacks down here for Miami, of course, Randy Shannon telling us this week, Kyle's our guy, Kyle's our guy, but I was told down here on the sidelines that this week in practice, they put a few packages in for Kirby Freeman. It was actually supposed to be stuff in the red zone, but I was told that they want Kirby to start feeling like he's part of this whole thing out here, and they want to get him a few touches out there. Well, it kind of looks like Kirby Freeman may be the guy next season. Penalty flags likely a legal substitution yeah. on Miami. Breaking the huddle with 12 players. Five yard penalty. Second down. Yeah, broke the huddle with uh, with 12, 12 players. Let's go to the studio while we have a moment and check in with Reese Davis. All right, guys, UCF taking on South Florida and the Bulls. Matt Grothy on a third and ten play in our Taco Bell studio update. Watch Grothy. Grothy's going all Doug Flutie on the people, and then he's going to fire it to Taurus Johnson in traffic and set up a Mike Ford touchdown. But now UCF has third and goal inside the South Florida Five. I think South Florida's for real. A lot of people questioning Jim Levitt and that football team. They're for real. Right on the play fake, showing off his running ability, and Philip Wheeler drills him at the 45. Bowen also there. <laughs> Look, Kyle Wright, nobody open downfield. Georgia Tech doing a pretty good job in zone coverage. Kyle Wright shows you, like you mentioned, that he can run the football a little bit as well. Now, you don't have to be fast if there's acres of green grass in front of you. Just methodically get it down the field. Protect yourself when you get in a crowded area. Get your team to third down. And most everybody knows Kyle Wright's story, one of the highest recruited players in the country when Brady Quinn and Jamarcus Russell came out of high school. Did not start at the beginning of the year. Kirby Freeman did, but Wright got the starting job back four games ago. And he has a completion inside the 40-yard line as he got leveled. It's pulled in by Chris Zellner for the first down. Yeah, making a start or, or coming in. And we saw his work on special teams, but the fire zone blitz from Phillip Wheeler just coming right up the middle on the, of the formation at Kirby Freeman. And he's able to get the football out quickly to Chris Zellner. What I liked at the end of that play is Zellner making a grab with his hands. Kyle Wright already has hit six of seven. 
in this football game. Oh, excuse me, he's been hit six times. Fourth down, Miami going for it with a yard to go, and they've got the first down and more. Inside the 20 yard line is McNeil. It's a Miami touchdown. First college touchdown for Sean Bray McNeil. Well, I tell you, he didn't waste any movement, hit the offensive line, but behind. Derek Morrissey, Reggie Youngblood on the right side of that offensive line. Had a big run earlier that was called back, but it's going to go right there, right up the crease. Nice block. Jarrell Mabry in front of him, the fullback, and now it's just speed to the end zone. And the PAT good by Zamponia. So Miami with a big punt deep in its own territory on that drive. And then they go for it on fourth and one. And it's a 39 yard touchdown run by McNeil. We're back at the Orange Bowl where Miami leads Georgia Tech 7 0. The last touchdown run by Sean Barry McNeil. You're going to see Phillip Wheeler right here just kind of get sealed off inside. Nice block by Chris Rutledge, which allows McNeil to go 39 yards on a touchdown run. First score for the true freshman. Now another true frost. Jonathan Dwyer on the kick return for Georgia Tech. Out past the 30 yard line to the 32. An eight play 80 yard drive that included a fake punt deep in Miami territory. It culminates in the 39 yard scamper by McNeil. Boy, McNeil showing some big playability in this game. Came into the, this, this game averaging just over four yards a carry. That yard per carry average going to shoot way up the chart. They've got some backs though here, Dave, that can really, really hit home runs. And they always have. Edron James, Willis McGahee, Clinton Portis, Najee Davenport. Now the Frank, Gore. Frank Gore. Frank yeah. Gore. You look at uh, the injuries that Frank Gore had. Uh, it hasn't slowed him down as he went to the Pro Bowl with the 49ers last year. Here's Choice, another good back on the opposite side of the field, and he powers to the 35. Spencer Adkins wraps him up. Well, I like the job that fullback Mike Cox, the senior out of Lewisbury, Pennsylvania, is doing in front of Tashar Choice. Nice blocks in the hole, opening up some things for Choice, and he took on Kenny Phillips earlier in a drive uh, in this first quarter and put him on his back, one of those pancake blocks. You're used to seeing those from the offensive line, not the fullback pancaking an All-American defensive back, Kenny Phillips. And he helped Choice lead the ACC in rushing a year ago. And off to the backup tailback, Rashawn Grant, to the 38, got three. It'll bring up third down. Later today, it's a battle in the Big Ten. Penn State taking on Wisconsin. The Badgers have won six of the ten meetings since the Nittany Lions joined the Big Ten 14 years ago. And Wisconsin bounced back after that loss to Illinois. A regional action includes Arizona, USC, South Carolina, North Carolina, AM, and Texas Tech. That's going to be a good football game. Even AM, Texas Tech, AM having to go on the road at Lubbock has given Dennis Francione fits one and four against the Red Raiders. There's Bennett on third down and four. He's got Demarius Thomas for the first down out to the 48 yard line. Willie Cooper made the tackle. Boy, a nice little curl route by Demarius Thomas on the outside, and you just kind of read it with your eyes as a quarterback. Take a guy where you want him to go. You're going to see a nice curl route here and a flat route coming behind a nice curl flat combination. You see it here now. Just pull the pull the backer outside with the flat route, shoot it inside to your receiver, and march on with this drive. Choice off the right side. Drilled at the 48 yard line by Adkins and McCray. Well, what you like about Choice is the patience of a senior running back. And I'll tell you what, he waits and allows the offensive line to set up blocks. Now, so far, the running backs dominating here in the opening quarter in Coral Gables at 7 0 Miami after one. Final year for the Miami Hurricanes at the Orange Bowl. They'll move to Dolphin Stadium next year. They once won 58 straight games here at home, an NCAA record. They've won five in a row this year. 
and outscoring opponents in the first half 71 nothing they lead Georgia Tech 7 nothing as that pass to the sideline is pulled in inside the 45 yard line Nesbitt backup quarterback on the catch that time tackled by Glenn Sharp and this will bring up a third down and four and you can best believe there'll be a lot of bodies around that line of scrimmage right here. This is where you want to live if you're on offense. Third down and four, your entire playbook still at your disposal. Bennett, we mentioned only two interceptions this year, but only two touchdown passes this year, and that one not even close. Greg Smith running down the sideline. It was about seven or eight yards behind him and out of bounds. So fourth down, and Georgia Tech will punt. Time now for our Aflac trivia question. You were dead on last week with Jeff George, the last number one draft pick for Illinois. Who was the last opposing player to score a first half TD in the Orange Bowl, Andre? I have no idea. I'll be waiting on the answer, like most of the country. Chavez Grant awaiting the punt, and he'll let it bounce, and it takes a Miami hop outside the 10 to the 15 yard line. Let's go down to the field and check in with Aaron. Well, Dave, clearly with Randy Shannon in charge, it's a new era here at the University of Miami. And even before the team hit the practice field in the summer, he passed out a sheet of paper to every single one of his players. It was a contract that he made them sign with new rules on it. After midnight, no phone calls to the head coach because nothing happens. Good, nothing good happens after midnight. No cell phones and hats in the football offices. We'll get to that one in a minute. <laughs> and also, freshmen, sophomore, you have to live on campus. Basically, all of this is he wants to take care of business off the field so things are cleaned up on the field. Dave, why don't you fill in that cell phone thing after this play? Yeah, Andre's <laughs> got it off right now. I'll put it to you that way. His right goes deep, and it is going to be dropped by Shields. He had a shot at it as word Daniels was covering him down the sideline but couldn't pull it in. Well, Andre, we turn off that cell phone, would you? Because Randy <laughs> Shannon gave you a dirty look when it was on me. during our meeting yesterday. I think he let me pass, like gave me a hall pass yesterday on it. It, it went off, and I, I, one of the first things you remind yourself of when you come into his presence is, hey, make sure the phone's off. Had heard all the stories about it, and uh, lo and behold, the baby rings right in the middle of the meeting. Well, when he was standing before the Board of Trustees with uh, Donna Shalala, the president, and uh, the athletic director, one of the phones of the board of directors went off and he said, turn it off, everybody. He hadn't even gotten the job yet. He's telling <laughs> people that. <laughs> Running play that nets maybe a yard. Javaris James downed by Gary Guyton. That's called leadership. I pick up the phone and call Reese Davis right now. Reese. All right, guys, somebody wants to be Big Ten Offensive or Special Teams Player of the Week. Brian Hartline has already caught a touchdown pass and then returning a punt for Ohio State against Kent State. Look at Hartline turning on the Jets. He may go. Who was that guy that used to return punts for Ohio State, Ted Ginn? It was Ginn-esque, 90 yards, 14-0 Buckeyes. Meanwhile, an injured player here, Gary Guyton, down for Georgia Tech. Penn State getting all they can handle today. Outside linebacker, two-year starter, Gary Guyton. You know, we're showing the highlights there, Andre, of, of Ohio State, and you think of all the great players that have been with the Buckeyes, and there's one here, Tim Walton, who was a co-captain on that 1993 co-Big Ten championship team with Ohio State, 1993. He's the, the defensive coordinator here. He ran down the list for us of the guys he played with at Ohio State. Impressive. Joey Galloway, Orlando Pace, Sean Springs, Eddie George, Alonzo Spellman was a great college player, Corey Stringer, the late Corey Stringer, and the quarterback on that team, Kirk Herbstreit. Yep. Our own ESPN's own Kirk Herbstreit. Yes, They're guiding over on the sideline and a third down and 10 now for the Hurricanes. They have yet to convert on third down in this game. And Wright's pass nearly picked off by Philip Wheeler. And guess who? <laughs> he is all over the place. Reads the eyes of Corey, excuse me, Kyle Wright. You'll see him right here, just kind of looking back inside at the quarterback. They go cover to zone. That's his job. Read the eyes of the quarterback. Makes a nice break on the football. Well, it's an eye game. You'll hear me mention that tons of times when teams are playing zone, both the offense and the defense. One's trying to get the advantage over the other. Bosher's kick 
will be fair caught at the 43 yard line by Tyler Evans. No offense so far for Georgia Tech. Miami leads 7-0. All right, guys, I'm on husband duty. Is there anything that she asked you to do that you don't jump to attention for? I want to make her happy. That's why I grew out the bangs. Finally, an R-rated comedy for adults. It's nice to put a face to the panties. Where'd you get those? The Heartbreak Kid, rated R. We didn't set out to be a getaway car. Or an art car. We didn't intend to be a part of any subculture or pop culture. We didn't set out to play games or to start a religion. We just made the car, the BMW 3 Series, another expression of independence from a company built on it. Hmm, do I want to save big on a beach resort or a cozy ski lodge? Yes, please. Save $150 on hotels and popular beach and ski destinations. Book today at Orbitz.com and stay a step ahead. Hey, yeah, Coach, part of the Coors Light Frost brewing process occurs at 34 degrees. Does that give it an edge over other beers? You know, if you can get up to 33 or certainly 34, then you are substantially ahead of your opponent. Coach, uh, don't you mean down to 33 or 34 degrees? Yeah. Frost Brewed Coors Light, official beer sponsor of the NFL. Coach? This guy's taking all our Coors Light, and we don't know how to stop him. If you don't have a guy on him, he'll hurt you bad. I mean, real bad. I'm Do you have what it takes to spend the rest of the year inside the octagon? Now's your chance to prove it. Introducing the UFC Ultimate Fight Pack from DirecTV. It's the best way to catch three UFC events live on pay-per-view. Act now, and you'll also get a one-year membership to the UFC Fight Club. Plus, the Ultimate Knockouts Volume 4 DVD. And a skull cap from Tap Out. A special offer only from DirecTV. Be a part of the biggest fight package of the year. The UFC Ultimate Fight Pack from DirecTV. What'd you bring? Chicken alibat. Ah, brownies all a supermarket. Oh, ladies. Dad is still sneaking around the cable. Oh, I knew it. How could she do that to us? Well, it ends tonight. I brought DirecTV's refer a friend offer. She deserves the best and all her favorite shows in HD. Now she can finally dump cable. Yeah. Oh, friends don't let friends watch cable. Refer a friend or family member to DirecTV, and you'll get $50, and they'll get $50, on top of our best offer. Back in Miami, where it's 7-0 Hurricanes, and if you're just waking up on the West Coast, you may want to uh, set your breakfast aside after that shot. <laughs> uh, Hank Goldberg from ESPN joins us. Hank, you've uh, been in the Miami area now for some 40 years, and you've seen some great moments here at the Orange Bowl. That guy stole my outfit. <laughs> <laughs> that might have, have topped it all. After this play, I want to get your take on some of your favorite moments from the Orange Bowl. Been some great games here, as Bennett's pass is incomplete at the 45-yard line intended for Greg Smith. Well, Orange Bowl, it's a 70 years old, great moments, five Super Bowls here. What's your fondest memory of this well, place? Well, I broadcast the Dolphin games here for 15 years, and I did that uh, that double overtime game. With, it was a Dolphins loss, actually, with San Diego, but, that, you know, the, the Kellen Winslow game. Uh, as far as the University of Miami, oh, and the Dolphins, when A.J. Dewey intercepted the two, game, the two passes, against the Jets and the Dolphins went on to the Super Bowl that year. UM, Notre Dame, that was classic when, you know, you, you, this place was so special. You walk down as, you walk down on the field before the game and when they had a full house here, you sense the electricity and of course a memorable game was when the UM won that championship under Howard Schnellenberger and upset Nebraska. I, that's probably my most memorable University of Miami game here. A lot of talent, a lot of electrical players have come through here. Michael Irvin and to say the, a few. You've had a chance to cover a lot of them. Are they getting back to the days of, uh, of the U when they were really, really special? Yeah, I think so. I think hiring a, a former player as a coach has has galvanized the program, the people in the program, and uh, they're they're coming back to Randy, and I think it's making a difference recruiting-wise. He's done a terrific recruiting job. I think this program is a year or two away from uh, from approaching where it used to be. First down for Georgia Tech, Greg Smith on the catch. Of course, uh, Shannon and the Hurricanes will move to Dolphin Stadium to play their home games next year. Hank, you also are a horse racing expert for ESPN and the Breeders' Cup coming up in two weeks, Monmouth, New Jersey. Who is the favorite? Well, uh, probably Curlin. 
uh, who uh, just won the Jockey Club Gold Cup, and he'll be taken on by Street Sense any given Saturday, who I like. A little advanced tip there for you guys. And lawyer Ron, this may be the most competitive Breeders' Cup Classic in the history of the race. And uh, there'll be 10 Breeders' Cup races, three on Friday this year and seven on Saturday. I'm excited about it. You talk about it being the most competitive Breeders' Cup uh, of, of uh, going back years. Are there any long shots that uh, kind of fall into that category with it being so close in terms of uh, uh, competition? You know what? It's so competitive that mm -hmm. you're going to get a square price, I think, on like any given Saturday, I think will be uh, five or six to one, and that, that'll be a square price. Uh, you know what? You look at the uh, you look at the turf races or the juvenile races, uh, particularly the juvenile, where it, it, it that's where you can really make a score. I did last year with Street Sense, who uh, paid double digits, and you know you've got to pick four, which uh, will pay a lot of money. Uh, there are a lot of ways to make money on Breeders' Cup Day. There'll be a Breeders' Cup pick six. Uh, there are all kinds of ways to, and, and by the way, they're going to give me a, an imaginary uh, $1,000 bankroll, which is, for me, reality TV. So I'm, <laughs> I'm going to have a blast there. By the way, Dwayne Hendricks, uh, the injured Miami player, getting helped off to the sideline. Speaking of uh, long shots, Hank Goldberg, uh, this has been a year unlike any other, right, in college football in terms yeah. of upsets? It sure has. Uh, you know, the, the Southern Cal upset, you know, for a team – to be a 40 plus point favorite and lose at home uh, that's unheard of and and I from a standpoint of the University of Miami you know they were approaching Miami's record here in the Orange Bowl of 58 consecutive wins so I think Canes fans were not that unhappy about it Bennett on second down as to throw it into the dirt in the area was choice on that place so it'll bring up third down and long. He's getting tremendous pressure by Spencer Atkins off the edge and forcing Taylor Bennett to get rid of the football. Talk about being able to, to get to the pass. Uh, Texas Fever in the Breeders' Cup. What do you think, uh, my man, uh, Bob McNair's horse? You know, uh, I root for Bob McNair. He may be the nicest man oh, yeah. in sports. And uh, I think, you know, I give Texas Fever a shot. Uh, uh, Mr. McNair is a person who is... Uh, he's a great sportsman, and he sends his horses out to win. He has, uh, you know, he has a good trainer, um, and he'll be a long shot. Oh, yeah. So you'll get a price on him, and I wouldn't be unhappy to see that happen. I remember when Mr. McNair was trying to get a franchise, and I interviewed him for ESPN, and he has never forgotten that. And I've spent a lot of time around the barn talking with him, one of the brightest men in sports, and, and now he's got a good football team besides, and they're a long shot. <laughs> and uh, George Dick's going to go for it here on fourth down after that catch, a couple of yard shot. Speaking of long shots, the Miami Dolphins maybe a long shot to win a game. Uh, uh, what's going on there? You know what? I was talking with uh, Leroy Selman, who uh, is a uh, former athletic director at South Florida. He still works with the program over there. And Leroy was on that 1976 Tampa Bay team that didn't win a game. And I asked him if they had champagne on ice for when the Dolphins finally win a game so that so that that Tampa Bay team will still be the only winless one. And uh, he says he's still going to therapy for that, for that season. So I don't know if he found the humor in that. But this week the Dolphins are at Cleveland. They have a, ch a chance there. By the way, talking about Bob McNair, his Houston team always gives Jacksonville a tough time. Yep, tomorrow. And they're, a, uh, they're a, I think, a six-point underdog in that game. And I think they'll keep that one close. They always do. They always give Jacksonville trouble, although Jacksonville was my 25-to-1 shot. Uh, I was in Vegas where it's legal, and I put down a few dollars on them <laughs> to win it all. Yeah, six and four against the Jaguars are the Texans uh, overall in the five-year history of, the, of that franchase. You Hank, did your homework. Look, yeah, he will, <laughs> especially when it comes to the Texans. All right, <laughs> Hank, we appreciate your time. We look forward to a senior picks on SportsCenter tomorrow. Okay, thanks. Enjoy your stay here in Miami. Thanks a bunch. Hank Goldberg of ESPN, horse racing expert and Miami resident for the last 40 years, and he's high in Randy Shannon, as is just about everybody. And both you and I, Andre, walked out of that office yesterday saying, this guy is going to be successful. Oh, yeah. He wins you over with his approach to recruiting into the game. Georgia Tech going for it on fourth down pass, batted in the air and incomplete. Eric Moncour made the play for Miami.
Well, he's a guy that the coaches really like. They love him. They say he is the real deal. Going to be a fabulous football player here at Miami. So Georgia Tech turns it over on downs. Miami leading 7-0. They've got the ball back. ESPN's College Football, brought to you by BMW, the ultimate driving machine. Aflac, ask about it at work. And Taco Bell, think outside the bus. Man, that looks good. The Versailles restaurant located in Little Havana, founded in 1971, according to some, the best authentic Cuban cooking in Miami. Looks good. Woo. So far, the Canes have looked good on defense, and they hold Georgia Tech in check. The Yellow Jackets turn it over on downs. The lone touchdown in the game, a scamper by true freshman Sean Bray McNeil for Miami. Here's Cooper on first and 10. Nice pick up to the 43. Got about six. Dragged down by Daryl Richard. Let's go back to the studio and check in with Reese. Guys, you know, it really hasn't shown in the record, but Duke is much improved, much more competitive. Frank Beamer talked about that this week, and Thaddeus Lewis firing a dart to the freshman Austin Kelly. It set up a Blue Devil touchdown, and at Wallace Wade Stadium, it's only 13-7 in the second quarter. And on ESPN2, Illinois is scuffling at Iowa, only up by a field goal. Kind of funny, even though yeah. the Duke hasn't had it result in wins as Cooper gets the first down. But there are a lot of basketball schools this year doing well in football. Indiana 5-1, and one, Kentucky, Kansas undefeated. Yeah, good note there. You know, you talk about Kentucky, Andre Woodson, one of the more high-profile players in the country. Had a tough one against South Carolina last week. Nine days to get ready, though, for a good LSU football team today. Can they beat LSU? I think so. They're at home. I give them a chance. You know, if he, he's got to have a mistake-free football game, move the ball, keep it away from LSU. But defensively, LSU, unbelievable. Great win against Florida last week. Here's Cooper waiting for the hole to open. And Cooper rumbles to the 39-yard line. D.J. Jones on the tackle for Georgia Tech. Boy, he sets up blocks, waits for Derek Morrissey to get out in front of him. But just watch the patience of the young runner right here. Just waiting and setting blocks up, allowing the offensive lineman to seal. And now it's time to turn on the speed. And that young man has plenty of it. There is a penalty flag down holding. So. Ten-yard penalty. First down. Perhaps that's why the hole opened up. <laughs> Which is why it was so big. There's that Cuban sandwich. We may have to get Aaron Andrews one of those. Man. Hey, when when you're in the OB, why not, right? Dre always gets the food here, so I'm gonna I'm gonna hunker down. No, save us some. <laughs> kind of cold. Does it taste better than the raw eggs we're gonna make you eat last week for Jay Layman? I'm just a guinea pig. I'm eating with my mouth or talking with my mouth full, guys. Back up to you, all right? Tell you what, send the other half of that up. That is Emmy Award winning material <laughs> right there. So first down and 20. Cooper to the left side. Nice open field tackle by Word Daniels. Another penalty flag down, though. Yeah, at the 43. This may be a block in the back by Orlando Franklin. I'll tell you what, EA was ready to drink the raw eggs last week for Jay Lehman, who uh, sucks down 20 raw eggs sometimes per day, the yeah. outstanding Illinois linebacker. Nice. Block in the back, 83 in the offense, 10 yards to spot foul, first down. He used to do that uh, in a malt, it was Sam Shields with a block in the back, but uh, you mix it in a malt, you don't taste it, but just to knock them down in a glass, Ooh. ugh. Did you get I told some? you guys, don't dare me. I would have done it, but I think Coach Zook put the Knicks on that last week. Ew. <laughs> well, we might, if you want to wash down that Cuban sandwich, we yeah. probably can send some your way. Get you a few eggs. Down if Dre there. does it, uh, um, I may try it. I'm only going to go six like Layman. We'll see. <laughs> and she puts the dare on me, knowing that I'll consider it for a second. Miami going backwards, first down and 28. Kyle Wright started this game, but... Kirby Freeman has been in for a couple of plays on option plays. Right hit as he throws incomplete, and boy, Mabry had a ton of green in front of him. It was Philip Wheeler who drilled Kyle Wright. Kyle Wright had a lot of Philip Wheeler in front of him. Wheels up again. 
Part of uh, our hardware, Philip Wheeler getting it done. And the answer to our Aflac trivia question, the last opposing player to score a first half touchdown in the Orange Bowl. Your answer was no idea. That, that's incorrect. DeWan Tribble of Boston College. Interception return. So it didn't come in the form of an offensive touchdown. Randy yeah, Shannon trying to restore some trickery in that question. Trying to restore glory here at Miami. We mentioned that Kirby Freeman was in a couple of plays earlier. He's back out there and running it here on second down and 28. And Daryl Richard has already graduated. He's working on his MBA. Makes the tackle for Georgia Tech. Yeah, and this has truly become that chess match because now Miami at second down and 28, you don't want to turn the football over, give Georgia Tech a short field. So you're thinking just take care of the football. Maybe if you're able to pop Kirby Freeman for a big one, then you may have an opportunity to pick it up on third down. If not, you're thinking safe here, punt and play defense, and you pin Georgia Tech down on deep in their own end of the field. Randy Shannon says they have to be better on third down today. They're not. They're 0 for 5. That is their first charge timeout. And now faced with a third down and 25. We'll have it for you when we come back to the Orange Bowl. 7 nothing, Miami. vehicle listings to choose from on cars.com you can find the right car for you that's it find the right car for you cars.com a four-year-old child is on the street we want to hire you to augment the investigation looks like somebody had a little talk with them before they shot him. they stole the little girl and you knew about it how much this child's all i care about. i'm gonna bring her home gone baby gone rated r Every day, workers across America cover our good name with dirt, grease, and mud. And you know what? We're fine with that. Dickies, a legend in work. We didn't set out to be a getaway car. Or an art car. We didn't intend to be a part of any subculture or pop culture. We didn't set out to play games or to start a religion. We just made the car, the BMW 3 Series, another expression of independence from a company built on it. Did you know one in four men worry about excessive sweating? That's why there's Degree Men Clinical Protection. It's prescription strength protection, making it three times more effective than what's required. It's tri-solid technology fights excess perspiration. Yeah. Degree Men Clinical Protection. It won't let you down. Back at the Orange Bowl in its 70th year, but it is not the oldest Division I facility. That belongs to Georgia Tech. Bobby Dodd Stadium, 94 years old. Right now, 7 0 Miami leading Georgia Tech. Kyle Wright in the game at quarterback. Not a lot of plays to pick up this third down and long. Ray Cooper gets the call as they just try to get some running room off the right side, and Phillip Wheeler makes the tackle. But maybe Miami should fake punt it. I mean, they've had more yards on fourth down <laughs> than they have on first through third down today. <laughs> Philip Wheeler, undersized when he arrived on campus at Georgia Tech, has really put on some weight and become a Nice middle linebacker, now 6'2", 230 pounds, very active, fast player from sideline to sideline. Bosher's punt taken by Evans and horse collared at the 38-yard line, and a penalty flag comes in. Apparently some face mask as well on the tackle by Ryan Hill. Yeah, it came from way across the field, but just talking about Philip Willer, he's you know, on a lot of All-American list, Butkus Award candidate he is one heck of a football player when you talk about size and speed has a knack for blitzing in the middle of the formation can find a crack and get himself to the quarterback 
And he wants to be an actor. And I tell you, this of all the ones we've done this year, this, this, this may out. be the best one right here. It is James Bond impression. <laughs> <laughs> he loves poetry. And hitting running backs in the mouth. It was a personal foul face mask, by the way, on Miami. So Georgia Tech will have the ball at the 48. You know, the Yellow Jackets have always had players. Calvin Johnson, number two pick in the draft last year. Oh, yeah. Chan Gailey, despite having limited scholarships, able to recruit, by many accounts, a top 15 class for next year. And their numbers are great. Their stats are great. They're just not winning games this year. They're three and three. And true freshman Josh Nesbitt in the game at quarterback. They bring him in. He can, he's got some wheels. So after the net of nine yards on the punt, Nesbitt takes off and picks up about 15 down to the 31-yard line that's where Glenn Sharp ball. makes the tackle. That's exactly what he's known for. And a little quarterback draw here allows the, the uh, everything in front of him to kind of get set up. A nice one, two, three eyes down the field. Now engage, get behind big Mike Cox, the fullback. Nice positive yards with a light. Both hands on the football in a crowded area. So a run for a first down. He also has a reception today and a timeout called by Miami. We were talking about Chan Gailey and the recruits that he's able to get. You know, it's hasn't been easy for a lot of coaches going from professional to college, but in terms of recruiting, obviously Pete Carroll has done a great job. Al Groh has done a decent job in, in Chan Gailey as well. Yeah, you know, and Miami takes a time out right here because they bring in Josh Nesbitt. It's something that's a little bit of a different wrinkle. Calvin Booker is the backup quarterback, but Nesbitt's played. He's a true freshman. They like to bring him in to run the football. So now Randy Shannon, as well as Tim Walton, the defensive coordinator, want to talk it up with uh, this defensive unit give them a heads up that this is what Josh Nedbit Nesbitt brings the ability to make plays with his legs from the quarterback position all right the next car next deal cup series coming down the home stretch now here's a preview of tonight's race With just six races to go, the chase for the NASCAR Nextel Cup is heating up, and so are the tempers of the 12 chase drivers. But it's all smiles for Jeff Gordon after reclaiming the points lead from Jimmy Johnson in Talladega. The battle refires with a Bank of America 500 at Charlotte tonight at 7 Eastern on ABC. Jeff Gordon leading the points race. Jimmy Johnson, not the former national championship coach at Miami, but race car driver nine points behind here's Nesbitt gonna throw and his pass is underthrown and almost intercepted it was James Johnson who actually kept Bruce Johnson from getting his second pick of the game yeah, Bruce Johnson making a nice play on the football you'll see here going up at the highest level trying to come down with it oh, that's a nice matchup James Johnson Bruce Johnson Brothers Johnson <laughs> and James Johnson not supposed to play. He was listed as out earlier this week with a knee injury, but he ended up making the trip. He's from Orlando, Florida. Four trips into Miami territory for Georgia Tech, but no points so far. Nesbitt staying in the game, but a penalty flag down. Before the snap, delay the game, number nine in the offense, five yard penalty. Second down. And that's what happens when a, a young quarterback comes in, a little inexperienced there. Now it's set up again behind the down and distance markers. And a couple of times on a couple of different occasions during drives, Georgia Tech starting behind that down and distance marker, making things a little bit tough on themselves against a pretty good Miami defense. That's Chan Gailey and offensive coordinator John Bond in his first year coming over from Northern Illinois, trying to spice things up on offense by putting in Nesbitt for Taylor Bennett. Bond replacing Miami's uh, offensive coordinator Patrick Nix, who was at Georgia Tech as the OC the last three years. Nesbitt on the keeper. Inside the 30 yard line, another penalty flag down. Nesbitt pretty close to the first down. And now another flag flies in. Yeah, a little late action, late hitting going on. And a this, helmet came off as Vegas Franklin. This is around that area of holding. And so, and so this, the umpire throw his hat as well as Vegas Franklin's helmet came off. This one may come back. Nice run on the part of Josh Nesbitt, though. Yep. And then you have the personal foul as 
That's why Vegas Franklin's helmet was off. Some double dipping going on. If it's after the, the whistle's blown, we get both these penalties. <laughs> two flags, one official hat, one official's hat, and, there are and a two helmet fouls flying. On the play. <laughs> Holding 61 of the offense. Be 10 yards from the spot of the foul. After the play, yeah. unnecessary roughness, 61 of the offense, 15 yards from the succeeding spot, second down. 25 yards in penalties on one play, and we had a helmet fly, an official's hat come off and fly in there. A lot of stuff flying around. Players flying around as well, Dave. And Matt Rhodes, who is the leader of that offensive line, can't let that happen. This is a patchwork group. They've only got seven healthy offensive linemen with injuries to Nate McManus and Jacob Lenowski. And Rhodes has started 40 straight games on that Georgia Tech offensive line. Second and 38 for the Yellow Jackets. Don't Taylor ask, Bennett back in the game at quarterback. Don't ask me what to call here. Bennett in trouble. Moncourt was all over him. And in the area that time was Colin Peak. So it's not grounding. And he may have been outside the tackle box anyway. But Moncourt having himself a day. Boy, this is just a straight bull rush. And then a nice little underneath hand right here. Just coming right off the corner is Eric Moncourt working against number 53, A.J. Smith. And, I mean, that is just speed. Getting around the corner to the quarterback. A lot of speed on this Miami Hurricane defense. Uh, Calais Campbell, the more heralded of the two, but the Miami coaches really think Moncour is an excellent player. Yeah, and Campbell drawing a lot of double teams, which is freeing up Vegas, Franklin, Eric Moncour, other guys to make plays. Here's third down and 38, and that pass short of Greg Smith. He would have been 20 yards shy of the first down anyway. So that's another trip into Miami territory not only does it not get any points but they go backwards about 40 yards they had great field position all of a sudden the penalty started to happen and then now the field position favors the Hurricanes so 25 yards and penalties on one play alone they're going to set up Miami in some pretty good field position Durant Brooks Georgia Tech number one in the NCAA in net punting Ray Cooper back. They almost blocked it. There was contact, but it was incidental. No flag down. Cooper is down at the 27-yard line. Back to the studio. Let's check in again with Reese Davis. But guys stepping out of Big Ten play, guys, and they are rolling. We've seen Brian Hartline put on a show the defense doing it, too. That is way too late. In the hand of Julian Edelman and Donald Washington takes it back the other way. Going to give Donald 70 on that one. Ohio State could probably hit 70 if it wanted to. They've got 28 just before halftime. Kent State has nothing. South Florida on ESPNU up 19 to 7, though the Golden Knights are on the march. And Rutgers spotted Syracuse 14, perhaps just to make it fair. And now the Scarlet Knights are up by seven. And meanwhile, a huge hit by Daryl Robertson just swallowing up the running back, Chambre McNeil, who has the lone touchdown today. Boy, Daryl Robinson just coming right off the edge right here, and he's going to get to the handoff about the time that Kyle Wright hands it off. You see him right here, unaccounted for a missed block by Orlando Franklin and Daryl Robertson. Wow, fast, a little speed of his own, the senior coming off the edge for Georgia Tech. Nine and a half tackles for a loss for him. Georgia Tech leads the nation in that category. Four-yard loss. Can we have a positive play, please, from somebody? <laughs> There you go. It's caught by the tight end Zellner to the 33 yard line, gain of five. Roberson on the tackle. Boy, this is a battle of wills. John Tenuta, the defensive coordinator for Georgia Tech, facing off against Patrick Nix, the offensive coordinator for Miami, and they won't change. They are going to go toe to toe. You see the success of that Yellow Jacket defense, first and tackles for a loss, third and sacks. First and fumble recovered, fumbles recovered. They, that's a lot of, a lot of positive stuff going on for the defense. And Nix was at Georgia Tech as the offensive coordinator said, "Yeah, he knows what." Well, hold on to that for a moment as Wright gets away from trouble and picks up the first down to the 47. Nick says 
you know what Tanuta's going to do. You just don't know where the blitz is coming from. And Kyle Wright got away from pressure that time and got the first down. Yeah, it was Adam Oliver who swung and missed. And Kyle Wright just kind of steps up in the pocket. You see him right here. Nice little double on the right tackle where they try to bring a, an extra guy off the edge to occupy. It's Anthony Barnes occupy the right tackle. And Kyle Wright showing a little mobility. You don't have to run 4-4. And able to uh, to uh, to get yourself open and down the field. Kyle Wright, nice adjustment in the pocket. There's Nix on the left, Tanuta on the right. They work together with Chan Gailey the last handful of years. McNeil getting a lot of work today at running back. And he gets tackled at the 45 for a loss. Another tackle for a loss for Georgia Tech. Let's get out of the field and check him with Aaron. Dave, well, obviously, we were talking to Patrick Nix about what it would be like for him today going up against John Tenuta's defense. And he played it off, like Andre mentioned in the top of the show, that, hey, if he changes something, I take that as a compliment. Well, I asked Georgia Tech's defensive coordinator about that. And Tenuta kind of just gave a smirk and laughed and said, ask Patrick Nix how many times my defense killed his offense in practice when he was with us at Georgia Tech. Wow. Of course, he'd like to get the better of him today, too. <laughs> Here's McNeil on the call to the 49. Well, there's been a lot of speculation as to why Nix left Georgia Tech. He told us that the commute uh, to the facility in Coral Gables was a lot closer uh, than the commute from his home in Marietta, Georgia, to Georgia Tech. And he made the decision, he says, after prayer and uh, for family considerations. Yeah, you know, and with all that mixed up, I still think there's a little bit more under the surface of why he left he comes to a team that's right in the same division in the same conference so you know there may be a little bit more to that but uh, he says nothing to do with the with chain Gailey says they still have a great relationship here's right and it's caught for a first down to the 40 yard line by Sam Shields right hanging in there that time and completing it for the first down. Well, I'll tell you what, John Tenuta may have gotten the best of Patrick Nixon practice, but right now game day, it's Patrick Nixon, his offense. Nice little in route, finds a nice soft spot in the in the first window, right there, that first window, Kyle Wright, right on time with the football. You'll see the receiver isolation settle it down right in there. Kyle Wright does a good job not leading him in zone coverage, but putting the ball right on the receiver's body. Shields had a big game against North Carolina last week. Week, 80 yards and a touchdown after getting benched for the first quarter. Right, going deep, looking for Jenkins and overthrow him incomplete. He underthrew Jenkins and a couple other receivers in the first quarter three times, and that time was too long with Word Daniels covering. And back to the studio again, Reese Davis. All right, Dave, Texas on the road against Iowa State. You know the Longhorns have lost four straight Big 12 games dating to last year. Colt McCoy has a whole lot of time, and Quan Cosby keeps working. Great catch in the back of the end zone. The Longhorns are up by two touchdowns. Nebraska's defense is playing great against Oklahoma State. That's not true! Cowboys up 17-0 in Lincoln. Wow. Unable to recover, apparently, from that thrashing of the hands of Missouri as Wright is taken down after a gain of one by Philip Wheeler again. That's five tackles by Wheeler. Our Wheeler just kind of comes out of nowhere. Kyle Wright, you think you see a lot of green grass in front of him. You think he's getting ready to run for a first down. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, Philip Wheeler comes up and makes the tackle. He's engaged in a block and still able to get off the block and make a tackle on Kyle Wright. What a terrific linebacker. Oh, he is a fabulous football player, Dave. And be interesting at 2.30, can he play inside in the NFL? Well, I think what gives him a chance is his outstanding speed in the middle, and he's just got a knack for getting off guys and making plays. Needs to come up with a play here. Miami inside the 40-yard line, third and nine, coming up leading 7-0. Georgia Tech 7-0, third down and nine coming up. Miami right now has the wind. 
And in pregame warm-ups, Georgia Tech's kicker Travis Bell made a 70-yarder. So you wonder here, does Miami, if it throws a pass and it's incomplete, try for a field goal at the 40-yard line? Yeah, here you're just trying to get it a little bit closer for the place kicker. We've had some some struggles in that department, so you may you're, you're right. You may see Randy Shannon take a shot and go for it on fourth down. That pass behind the intended receiver Darnell Jenkins incomplete, and it is fourth down and long. Let's see what Miami does if it's going to go ahead. Fourth down. Yeah, punt the football here. Punt and play defense. Michael Johnson out of Selma, Alabama, Dallas County High School. The big defensive end for Georgia Tech forced Kyle Wright to get rid of that football a little bit faster than he wanted to and would force basically the incompletion. Strimple trying to angle it toward the far side. It'll be fair caught at the 17 by Tyler Evans and that's where Georgia Tech will take over. We have had eight total punts more punts than points here in the first half. Miami has not given up a point at home all season in the first half. That's amazing. I mean, you talk about two good defensive units, and with the exception of one big play by the running back, Sean Barry McNeil, the true freshman out of Dallas, Texas, Madison High School, with the exception of that 39-yard touchdown run, yeah, I mean, we're talking zeros and two fabulous, fast defensive units dominating this football game. And that touchdown by Sean Bray McNeil was on a fourth and one on the same drive in which Randy Shannon went for a fake punt inside his 20 yard line and it worked. Here's Choice with one of his best runs of the day. Gets about eight to the 25 yard line. He talked about that fake punt. Gutsy call by Randy Shannon deep in his own territory. The direct snap. And for a first down for Deron Thomas. Yeah, Deron Thomas right there converting on fourth down. And then Shamber and McNeil right here. Nice block. They seal Philip Wheeler on the inside. And then McNeil, a 39-yard sprint to the end zone. Those are the two biggest plays of the first half. Each team of the timeout, three minutes to go. Grant gets the call, going to lose yardage. Dropped at the 24 by Tavares Good, Miami's leading stopper. Well, he is a solid inside player. Was the team's Sam linebacker last year after being sidelined with an injury in 05. Uh, he's played all over, all three linebacker positions. I think he's finally found a home in the middle of that Miami Hurricane defense. And his linebacker coach knows a thing or two about playing that position. Michael Barrow, great Miami linebacker player in the NFL at that position and Michael Barrow he was a heck of a football player himself trying to pass down that wisdom to this linebacker court Miami off the play fake Bennett with a strike to Thomas and the first down to the 36 yard line well what I like is a sense of urgency on the part of Thomas as well as Taylor Bennett they know that Miami's going to try to get some heat Big guys up front, ears pinned back, rushing the passer. But a nice quick read on the part of Taylor Bennett allows for the first down to uh, or allows for them to move the chains and pick up the first down. There's Calais Campbell. We haven't called his name yet, but you talked about the fact he's been double teamed a lot. Yeah. Moncur has benefited from that. He was in Bennett's face on the last play. Yeah, Campbell had ten and a half sacks last year, came into this one with just four. Bennett trying to get away from Campbell. And he's got a man over the middle, but Greg Smith can't hang on to the ball at the 45-yard line. Well, Greg Smith came into this game with 16 receptions in the last four games. So usually some pretty reliable hands. That one thrown maybe a bit behind him. Taylor Bennett feeling a little bit of pressure. All you got to do, a guy like Greg Smith, just throw him a catchable ball. Let him operate in the open field, and he's certainly got the skills to make some guys miss, pick up some nice positive yards for you. Well, this has been the problem for Chan Gailey's team this year. They just can't get anything yeah. going in the passing game. Second and long is a uh, area in which they want to stay out of. Bennett with time, and he surveys the field and has a completion to his tight end peak to the 44-yard line. Boy, a nice job going through your reads if you're Taylor Bennett. Looked outside first to D.J. Donnelly and then came right back inside. Watch the eyes and then back inside. Nice little flick to Colin Peak, the tight end. And they've been kind of struggling at tight end and trying to find a run blocking tight end. They've got a couple of receiving guys that can make some catches. They need some guys that can block up front. 
Great hit by Kenny Phillips in the mold of Sean Taylor and Ed Reed, two former outstanding safeties as Choice gets the first down on third and one. That'll stop the clock with a minute seven remaining. One timeout still for Georgia Tech. Man, he's a good short yardage runner, runs with a low center of gravity and just kind of has a knack for find, finding a nice little crack and little seam. You don't have to open up a big gashing hole for a guy like Tashar Choice. Rated by Mel Kuyper, the number two rated senior running back coming out in this year's class. So he's a special guy going to have a, an opportunity to continue his playing days after uh, leaving Georgia Tech. There's Travis Bell. We talked about the fact he hit a 70 yarder in warmups, but that was going the other way. This is into the win. Bennett on first down. Trying to find someone to throw it to. And it's incomplete, intended for Demarius Thomas. Well, they are giving chase. A lot of guys surrounding uh, Taylor Bennett, coming from a lot of different angles. Given chase and you know you kind of force him that gets frustrating to a quarterback whenever you drop back all of a sudden instead of being able to look down the field you're seeing orange jerseys flashing in your face before you can even get your feet set that gets a little bit frustrating all of a sudden you, you find yourself making some bad decisions trying to force some throws in certain situations. Here comes pressure again, and Bennett's pass is dropped again. Thomas probably should have had that at the 38-yard line, and Bennett's shaken up. Yeah, Demarius Thomas should have come down with that one. You can, it hits your hands. You know the old saying, if it hits you in the hands, you should make the play. They motion to a bunch formation. You're going to see it right there. They motion in, nice little flat route, seam route, and dragging underneath is Demarius Thomas. And Taylor Bennett does a nice job of sitting in the pocket, waiting it out. He knows he's going to take a lick. That's one you got to make a play for your quarterback. Joe Joseph making his first start with the big hit on the quarterback for Miami. Pontiac halftime report coming up 34 seconds. Chan Gailey looking for his third, third down conversion on this drive. And they're going to run choice. And he cannot get away from Spencer Adkins. Only one yard on the play. And Georgia Tech apparently content to end the first half. You know, I'm okay with trying to run the draw, maybe catch Miami by surprise, maybe thinking pass, you get the pass rushers coming up the field. But what I disagree with was the formation they came out in. Came out with everything tight to the line of scrimmage. Miami tightened down, kind of squeezed everything, and all of a sudden there's nowhere to run for choice. Now here's the question. Why would Georgia Tech call timeout? Georgia Tech, fourth down and 10, calling timeout. Back in a moment. U.M. A lot of people still trying to figure out why Chan Gailey called timeout. If you go for it and don't get it, Miami's got the ball. You might as well make Miami use its final timeout only or just let the time run out in the first half. I agree with you. The only thing I can think of is that, you know, maybe they didn't have enough guys on the field for the punting team and was going to be forced to, to get it off before the, the – uh, the time clock but man I don't understand why Georgia Tech's calling the timeout or just take the penalty it almost got blocked that's the second time in a row Miami's almost blocked it great pump though by Brooks pinning Miami at the six yard line Hurricanes do have a timeout remaining we'll see if they're content to go in at halftime leading by seven Brooks with a 46 yard perfect punt yeah he is it was second team All-American last year Ray Guy award candidate and he is a weapon we talked to Randy Shanna and he gave high praise to Durant Brooks the senior punter from Georgia Tech and when you get in these tice cloak close tight games Dave that punter all of a sudden can change field position for you so he becomes a weapon uh, so to speak in himself and Miami is just going to down it after that great boot by Brooks so Wright takes a knee and Miami will take a 7 nothing lead into the locker room and they still in the first half at the Orange Bowl this season have not allowed a point but it's only a one score game 7 nothing 
after a half. Now let's join Reese Davis, Lou Holtz, and Mark May for the Pontiac Performance Halftime Report. Reese? All right, Dave. So Welcome to ESPN College Football presented by Cars.com. Start of the third quarter here in Miami. It is 7-0 the Hurricanes on top of Georgia Tech. Back with Andre Ware and Aaron Andrews, I'm Dave Pash. And if you like punts, you've come to the right place. More punts <laughs> than points in that first half. Well, a lot of defense being played in this football game. And Phillip Wheeler for Georgia Tech and the entire front four for uh, Miami disrupting the rhythm of the Georgia Tech offense. So it's been a defensive battle so far in this football game. And either team uh, getting much going through the air. One rushing touchdown by true freshman Sean Bray McNeil. And now uh, Daly will kick off. And Jonathan Dwyer is wearing Calvin Johnson's old number. And Dwyer will take a knee, and Georgia Tech will start at the 20. As we bring in Aaron Andrews. Dave, and speaking with Georgia Tech head coach Chan Gailey, he told me it is a possibility he will continue to rotate his quarterbacks, Taylor Bennett and freshman Josh Nesbitt. He said it feels like it creates a different look, gives him a few options. Adjustments he looks to make on the offense side of things. He says we need to run the ball consistently. He blames not being able to in the first half to not blocking well in those drop passes. He blames that on concentration, Dave. Well, and the only reason why... Miami has the lead is because Georgia Tech perhaps didn't concentrate on Miami's punt that was a fake that went for some 30 yards. Here's Choice banging through one tackler and then wrapped up by Kenny Phillips at the 24-yard line, gain of four. Well, Georgia Tech has tried to go to the air in the first half of this game, but just a lot of heat on Taylor Bennett. Okay, you see right here, and they're getting the pressure with just the big guys up front. They're not having a blitz to get pressure. When he does get time, they're putting the ball on the ground. Greg Smith with a drop there. Just a frustrating first half for quarterback Taylor Bennett. Only two passing touchdowns all season for Taylor Bennett and both to Demarius Thomas. Choice again. And he's close to the first down marker at the 30-yard line. Appears to have it tackled by Spencer Atkins. Anemic passing by both teams in that first half. And again, uh, more yards on fourth down for Miami than first through third down. Oh, you see the third down conversions there. Both teams well under 50%, right at 50% for Georgia Tech. But fourth down's 0 for 1. And a lot of punting going on right there four and five for both teams respectively. So two running plays by Tashard Choice the ACC's leading rusher and he picks up a first down. Play fake this time and Bennett looking deep and nobody home incomplete nearly picked off by Willie Cooper as the quarterback Bennett and Thomas not on the same page. Yeah a little uh, misread on the part of Demarius Thomas and Taylor Bennett. Bennett thought that uh, Demarius Thomas was going to continue his route. Thomas read zone and hooked up on the outside. Right there, just kind of miscommunications, kind of right there talking it over with uh, the other wide receiver, Greg Smith, as well as some of the Georgia Tech faithful along the sideline. Even with the often criticized Reggie Ball, Chan Gailey's offense moved the ball much better through the air. Now, granted, they had Calvin Johnson, but. Ball did have more success, at least from a number standpoint, as Choice has a huge hole, and he's inside the Miami 30. Breaks a tackle at the 20, eventually dropped at the 15 by Bruce Johnson. The first big play today for Georgia Tech. Just kind of wondering why, you know, when you have a guy like Tashara Choice, why not give him the football? Go back to your bread and butter, and they finally do. Tashara Choice banging it inside, and then all of a sudden finds himself on the third level of the defense, running wild in the secondary, being tracked down by Glenn Sharp. Well down the field, but Georgia Tech comes out of the locker room at halftime. They're going to establish the run, which is to start choice. That gained 54 yards from the 16-yard line. Rashawn Grant gets the carry. Cuts it back. 
and does well down to the 11 for five more yards on the ground. Well, you know, one thing, you talk so much about the speed of this Miami defensive unit, and what better way to combat that speed than to line up and go right at it with a, with a hard-nosed running back like Tashar Choice. Allow the offensive linemen to get themselves in the game. You know, they're, they're catching it from every end in terms of trying to pass block against this active four guys up front for Miami. Line up, get downhill, go right at that speed. Tim Walner just saw in the box his defense having to call timeout. North Carolina gashed Miami for 183 rushing yards last week. And a good drive on the ground for Georgia Tech to open the third quarter. Over 800 million people around the world know what it's like to go to bed hungry. Join Yum! Brands and our 35,000 restaurants worldwide in the movement to stop world hunger by supporting the World Food Program. To learn more, visit one of our restaurants during World Hunger Relief Week or go to fromhungertohope.com because you can help save lives. Discover something good for nature and your home. From energy efficient appliances to water saving shower heads, the Home Depot's Eco Options program makes it easier to find thousands of alternatives with less impact on the environment. And to celebrate October as Energy Month, save 10% on select Energy Star qualified appliances, windows, patio doors, and more. Save energy, save money. Learn how at the Home Depot. A raindrops keep falling on my head. But that When's the last time you replaced your wiper blades? Cry is not for me, cause I'm never gonna right now at Advance, all wiper blades are 25% off. Because I'm free. And as always, we install them fast and free. Yeah, free. We're ready in advance. tradition of excellence has continued in the Atlantic Coast Conference, but it's not all about trophies and winning. It's also about sportsmanship, showing respect, rising above it all, and being a leader for both fans and players alike. In the ACC, we're working hard to continue making sportsmanship a tradition. The ACC, a tradition of excellence, then, now, and always. In Miami, 7 0 Canes, but Georgia Tech, as you see, threatening. First time either team has been in the red zone today. And to Shard Choice, the reason why after that run of over 50 yards. Well, he has been a workhorse the last two weeks 32 carries and two ball games. Coming into this one, well over 100 already. 16 carries, 116 today. He'll get it here on second down. And those guys to the nine for three more. It'll bring up third down choice with just under 400 rushing yards the last three weeks and here's a guy battling a hamstring injury you, you saw those carries previous two games going into today well the two games prior to that he had a total of 20 carries because of that hamstring problem yeah you know and the last play that was called little counter play where you got to pull and block down too much speed for Miami defensively to run plays like that go to more of a power type deal where you can get choice going downhill into the gaps of the defense and not allow the speed to track him down from behind that's where he's been Bennett is best today. Play fake. Bennett has running room. Bennett inside the five, going for the pylon. It's a Georgia Tech touchdown. A nice run on the part of Taylor Bennett. Got everybody drawn inside with a play fake to, to Shard Choice. Now he's out on the edge. Looking downfield, the eyes down the field, directed traffic. Nice little play fake here, and he's coming around the end right here. You sell it, just kind of point to the receiver. He goes back inside. You have to respect it, and just outraces Willie Cooper to the pylon. 
Yeah, Glenn Sharp had to stay with the receiver as Bennett was pointing. The extra point good by Bell. Second rushing touchdown this year for Bennett. He has as many rushing touchdowns as passing TDs. And the game is tied at seven. Early third here in Georgia Tech's final appearance at the Orange Bowl. Kenny, uh, I need 50 pounds of roast beef. Sorry, Pat. We're all out. No, don't give me that. What, did your wife wolf it down for breakfast? <laughs> That came out wrong. Look, she's 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 not. She's look at me. I mean, we're probably we probably weigh this. The network you can trust. AT and T. Now buy one Nokia six five 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 and get one free. Introducing the new Jeep Liberty with a completely redesigned interior and a s a smoother. Hey, what? Uh, and uh, a smoother on-road ride with more comfortable seats, added legroom, and... Uh, you gotta be kidding. Introducing the new all-Jeep Liberty. Love is like candy on a shelf. You want to taste and help yourself. The sweetest things are there for you. Help yourself, take a few, that's what I want you to do. Just help yourself. Treat yourself to the rich, decadent taste of Diet Dr. Pepper. There's nothing diet about it. Every day, workers across America cover our good name with dirt, grease, and mud. And you know what? We're fine with that. Dickies, a legend in work. Why you always get the first? Because I have the higher point. Hey, hey, hey. It's Bobby Bowden. Well, I'm going to touch him. Now would be a good time to have accident forgiveness. Part of Allstate Your Choice Auto Insurance. Are you in good hands? ESPN's College Football. Brought to you by AT&T. Your world delivered. Jeep. With seven Jeep vehicles, there's one for you. And ESPN Game Plan. See the most college football every Saturday to order call your pay-per-view provider. The Venetian Pool, nestled in a residential neighborhood in Coral Gables. Miami and Georgia Tech tied at seven early third quarter. An 80-yard scoring drive, all rushing yards, culminating in a 10-yard run by the quarterback, Taylor Bennett. Kind of looked like the pass backyard. Yeah, it did, didn't it? <laughs> the, the grass right here, you mean? <laughs> and a high kick. And it'll be taken at the 20-yard line by Hill. That was very odd. And it was fair caught there at the 20. So Miami will take the ball there. After Georgia Tech gets a touchdown drive, we're going the length of the field. Here's Reese Davis now back in the studio. All right, guys, every week we honor the AT&T ESPN All-America Player of the Week, and we need your help to do that. All you have to do, text the word VOTE, 87654, on your AT&T wireless phone. You can access the nominees, you can cast your vote, and you can enter for a chance to win a trip to the national championship game in New Orleans in January. All right, Reese, thanks for letting us get a shot of your uh, bathtub and put it on our billboard as uh, James gets good yardage before Wheeler knocks him out of play. James barely played in the first half. And Tashar Choice is trying to put himself on the ballot for AT&T Player of, of the Week. So it's Philip Wheeler, some big plays at linebacker for Georgia Tech. Yeah, you see him here stopping the run and an undersized coming in. But here, a blitzer we talked about, maybe the best blitzing linebacker in the country able to get here and then he can pass defend as well getting his hand on a nice little curl route in his area the guy is a complete player who can play the field from sideline to sideline they're going to run chains again on second down and six tackled for a loss by adam oliver and vance walker Georgia Tech leads the nation in that category. All of a sudden, Georgia Tech coming out of halftime. A little more pep in their step. 
Offensively, they've kind of gone back to their roots, giving the football, running the ball with Tashar Choice, and here allowing the defense to take over, continuing to make plays behind the line of scrimmage. John Tenuto, the defensive coordinator, dialing him up. And this has been Miami's problem this year. Randy Shannon says oftentimes his players don't trust the coaches when it comes to playing hard on every down and starting fast. They've started slowly here in the third. And a third down and eight coming up. Right under pressure again. And he's going to slide a couple of yards shy of the first down, and Miami will have to punt the football. Yeah, and he had Richard Gordon down the field. Uh, what I don't like about this, I like him stepping up in the pocket, but then he tucks the football right away, and it doesn't allow him to make a throw down the field. You'll see him here. Everybody's covered up. He's getting tremendous pressure. Now, you step up. Defenders leave receivers. The tight ends are wide open down the field, but he can't throw it because he's got the football tucked away running it. Good punt by Bosher. Fair caught at the 23. The NASCAR Nextel Cup Series is coming down the home stretch, and now here's a preview of tonight's race. With just six races to go, the chase for the NASCAR Nextel Cup is heating up, and so are the tempers of the 12 chase drivers. But it's all smiles for Jeff Gordon after reclaiming the points lead from Jimmy Johnson in Talladega. The battle refires with a Bank of America 500 in Charlotte tonight at 7 Eastern on ABC. Rocket man Ryan Newman on the pole. Jeff Gordon gunning for his fifth championship in his first since 2001. First down for Georgia Tech on the 23. Here's Choice breaking a couple of tackles. And another good run. Got close to 10 to the 33-yard line. Daryl Sharpton made the tackle. And what's different there is they bring Mike Cox, who's been known as one of the best blocking fullbacks in the country, in front of Choice. Mentioned the Bank of America 500 is tonight on ABC at 7 Eastern time. Jimmy Johnson nine points behind Jeff Gordon. Randy Shannon trying to bring back Jimmy Johnson like glory here to Miami. A different Jimmy Johnson. Won a national championship. Shannon did as a player for Johnson in 1987. A race to the finish. Right now tied with Georgia Tech at seven. Big game for both teams. Miami can't afford to go one and two in the league, having to play at Florida State next week. Choice very close, appears to have it on second down and one. Speaking of the 1987 Miami National Championship, which was 20 years ago, here's uh, Jimmy Johnson, hair perfectly in place as usual. <laughs> There's Barry Switzer, uh, both ended up coaching the Cowboys. Top-ranked Oklahoma. Miami was number two. There's Michael Irvin wearing number 47. And the Hurricanes win it 20 to 14, and the hair doesn't even move during the celebration. <laughs> Just a little bit. Just a little bit. And if they want to contend for the ACC Coastal, they need to win this game. They got Florida State on the road next week. Only two more games here at the Orange Bowl after today. Another big hole, this time off the left edge. For Tashar Choice, Willie Cooper drags him down after eight yards. Boy, and they, they need to find a way to give Mike Cox, the fullback, a, uh, a game ball once this one's over. Choice is going to get all the yardage, but it's it's Mike Cox who's doing the dirty work, sticking his nose in there. You're going to see him come across and a nice little lead block from the fullback position right there. Just now he's, he's find a, a player. He doesn't get a whole bunch, but just enough to occupy for Choice to make a cut up the field and positive yardage. And Nesbitt back in the game at quarterback, the two true freshmen who did a good job running the ball in the first half, just muscles his way past a handful of Miami defenders. Georgia Tech taking it to Miami on the road right now. Another first down. Right now they're winning that battle of the line of scrimmage. The offensive line firing, firing out. And we mentioned, Dave, you mentioned the fact that they're a little shorthanded in terms of offensive linemen. But right now going to the bread and butter, this is this is what they like to do. Run the football. They got sold on the passing game, figuring they had to work some things to open up some running lanes. Right now it's just physical inside running. And all of their yards in this half have come on the ground. Bennett, who has the rushing touchdown for Georgia Tech, back under center. The give to choice. And again, there's a hole, but a penalty flag down. Gain of five, but that's likely coming back. Good and made the stop for the Hurricane. Yeah, it's right in the middle of that formation, thrown right in there where, at the, where it's going to draw a holding call on one of those big grunts up front.
Holding, 61 of the offense. 10 yards from the spot of the foul. First down. That'll bring up a round of first down at about 18 as we go back to the studio and check in with the Reese. Guys, Illinois in a world of trouble. Iowa's offense has struggled all year. Jake Christensen has time to throw it and does so beautifully to his tight end, Brandon Myers. Starting the fourth quarter on ESPN2, it's 10 to 6. And just before halftime, Zach Robinson going in against Nebraska. Mike Gundy's going to be able to say, I've almost got 40. It's 38 nothing at the break. <laughs> A young football team at Illinois hadn't quite figured out how to raise that level of play each and every week. And if you're Nebraska, you got to be embarrassed right now if you're a fan. Rashawn Grant fumbling the ball. But they're going to say his forward progress stopped at the 36. Let me just finish that point in Nebraska. You get smoked by Missouri last week. You come back home and you're getting blown out at halftime. And don't forget the job that USC did on Nebraska in Lincoln. So it was a game that they spent a lot of time in the offseason preparing for, basically humiliated, and the score was a lot closer than the actual game was. You know, they rewarded Neil, uh, 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 Bill Callahan with a brand new contract a couple of weeks ago. Hmm. A lot of fans, uh, obviously, after what happened in Nebraska so far, questioning that move. 11 rushes, only the second pass play of the half, and that's behind the intended receiver, James Johnson, and incomplete. Still could have been caught, though. There is a penalty flag down. Pass was behind Johnson, but a catchable ball. I mean, didn't you used to tell your receivers that if uh, you get your hands, hands on it? Yeah, I'm under a tremendous amount of pressure back here, fellas. If you can get your hands on it, why don't you go ahead and make a catch for me? Holding. Holding. Number four, the defense. Oh, boy. The foul was against an eligible receiver. And the ball was thrown beyond the line. Ten yards from the previous spot. Automatic first down. Uh, the automatic first down. It would have been third down in 19. Instead, automatic first for Georgia Tech. And it's Glenn Sharp giving up the uh, holding in the defensive secondary. It's going to be an automatic first down, like you mentioned. He's come back from two ACL surgeries. Sixth year player who played against Ohio State a few years ago in the national championship game. But you see him here. You get that five yards. You got to let go. And there's an official right over there. That is very close, Dave. I'm not sure if that warrants a flag being thrown. And an automatic first down. Choice getting blocks and slipping tackles. Running well here in the third quarter. Got about 15. And another injured Miami player, Tavares Gooden, shaken up at the 47-yard line. Yeah, it's Big Mike Cox again, all 6'1", 250 pounds of him. Watch him come here, and he's going to seal just a nice block on the edge. Watch the block as he chops down the edge player right there for T Tashar Choice. And now it's just running ability, instincts, turning up the field. Georgia Tech has found some rhythm offensively and it's been behind that big guy it's the running of Tashar choice but the blocking of the fullback Mike Cox and good and healthy enough to stay in the game another first down for Georgia Tech on the 40 yard line little quick hitter to Grant and Grant dragged down by Gooden from behind but after eight more yards You know, coaches feel like Mike Cox is one of the one of the best blocking fullbacks in the nation. He's a two year starter, big physical guy at the line of scrimmage. He missed the spring with a show with shoulder sur shoulder surgery. But I'll tell you what, he, he's playing at 100 percent right now. And a second down and two for Chan Gailey's group on the 32 yard line. He'll keep Grant in the game and Cox back in and that broken eye. That would be the formation, not an injury. Grant and another penalty marker down as Grant is stuffed at the point of attack by Daryl Sharpton who went to the same high school as Miami great Jonathan Vilma now at the Jets. No, well, Grant's a smaller guy. You know, you're just in second down and short, you're going to run the football. I'd go with choice. He's more the bruiser, bigger physical guy of, of the two. And they bring the formation against the offense. Did not have seven men on the line. Five yard penalty. Second down. And they bring choice right back in the football game. That's mental error right there, not having enough guys on the line of scrimmage. Georgia Tech with 129 rushing yards here in the second half. They wow. lead the ACC in rushing coming into this game. Yeah, 199 a game. And right on pace. 
to eclipse it today. Miami made them one dimensional in the first half, but not in the second half. Bennett throwing on second and seven. And his pass is caught inside the 25 by Earl. So another first down for Georgia Tech. Boy, this is well timed. They get man to man on the outside. And what I like is uh, Corey Earls doesn't wait on this football. Watch him push up the field here. Nice comeback to the to the football. And you come working back to the quarterback. This is what allows him to get open. Ball is delivered on time. That nice step. Coming back to the football, positioning his body between the defender, Glenn Sharp. Nice throw and catch. It'll be choice, and he is smoked behind the line of scrimmage. Adkins came flying in there. So did Vegas Franklin, who wears Michael Irvin's number 47. That's a loss of one. Watch the tremendous push that you're going to get up front. Bodies getting low for Miami defensively right here, getting in every gap, slanting inside. They know it's coming. Mike Cox right there, the big fullback unable. There's three guys. He can only account for one of them. Vegas Franklin had a half a sack his first three years combined. He's got five this year. Makes a nice play on the running back. Choice for a one-yard loss. And Vegas Franklin having a heck of a season. Play fake. Bennett going to throw to his tight end peak. Another yellow jacket first down inside the 10 yard line. Demarcus Van Dyke made the tackle. Boy, they fooled everybody in the house and myself included. They show it to, to Shard Choice on a nice little play fake here and a bootleg. Watch the flow of the Miami defenders come this way. And now all of a sudden Bennett is out on the edge with just the tight end Colin Peak for a big, big first down at Georgia Tech continuing Dave to move the chains well they ran the ball so well setting up that pass play and now a first down and goal at the eight yard line second drive in a row they've been inside the red zone choice left side nothing nice play by Gooden and they're still continuing to go back to that counter. They've had a little bit of success, but now all of a sudden you get down here in a condensed area. That's speed. That's when you're playing into the hands of the defense. Line up, go right at them. You've had tremendous success doing that. Let Choice get downhill going right at this Miami front seven. No passing touchdowns in the red zone. Only two passing touchdowns total for Bennett this year. Yeah, it's a play action right here, and the nice tight end leaking over the top would be pretty good for Georgia Tech as well. 12th play of the drive. It is going to be a running play to choice. Powers pass to five. And then jacked by Gooden at the three-yard line. And again, Mike Cox with a nice block at fullback. Well, Mike Cox, he's earning his stripes today. A nice big block. You're going to see him pull around, get in front of Tashar Choice, and just nice, just not a big block, but just enough to kind of free up Choice to get his shoulders pointed down the field and pick up positive yards. He's getting my game ball today. Third down and goal for Georgia Tech. Fourteenth play of this yellow jacket drive. Play clock at two. Here's the play fake. And this is going to be Bennett again into the end zone. And he lost the ball. And it's a touchdown. He did get the ball across the plane before his body hit the pylon, which is out of bounds. And it's a Georgia Tech touchdown. Well, you look at all the bodies that are inside. Eight guys in the box. And now all of a sudden he shows the play fake. He's going to show the play fake and everybody waiting inside all those bodies in that box. Now all it takes is a step down inside and he's out on the edge by himself right there just to the pylon stretch it across and run in for a touchdown. Nice play on the part of Taylor Bennett and definitely a TD. He did get the ball across before eight. He lost it and before he hit the pylon while in possession of the ball Bell with a PAT and Georgia Tech storming back. Here in the third quarter, back-to-back -back rushing touchdowns by the quarterback, Bennett, and they've got the lead on the road. A pair of rushing scores by Taylor Bennett and Georgia Tech after a 14-play, eight-minute drive. 
with Mike Cox leading the way on several running plays, blocking for Deshard Choice. Georgia Tech leading, just dominating time of possession yeah, in the third. Yeah, 11 minutes to just one and a half for Miami. They've run 21 plays to Miami's three. Short kick, Hill inside the 20 yard line. And can't slip a tackle down to the 27 as we go back to the studio again and Reese Davis. All right, guys, going to keep our finger on the pulse of everything going on. They're in a break in Iowa City. The Hawkeyes just turned the ball over on a fumbled snap to Illinois with 9.16 to go down by four. They're about to get the ball back. Our game, Georgia Tech with the lead, and South Florida is putting it on UCF 36-10 on ESPNU. Dominant performance by the Bulls defense. Well, old Conference USA foes South Florida and Central Florida going at it. All of a sudden, I, it's Central, it's South Florida for real. Yeah, because Central Florida was playing pretty well. Yeah. When I spoke with George O'Leary before the season. He was very pleased with his team's chemistry. They played well so far this year. They're getting smoked today. Speaking of getting smoked, Daryl Richard just gobbles up the quarterback, Kyle Wright, inside the 20 yard line. Oh, and he, he is a very smart individual, graduated in just three years at Georgia Tech. Watch the big fella right here. Feel it, and it's kind of come off under control. Kyle Wright kind of falls right into the lap of Daryl Richards, but graduated in three years at Georgia Tech with a management degree working on his MBA. That's a smart young fella right there. Yeah, Georgia Tech. Uh, Pretty high academic standards. Three sacks now on the season for Richard. His first today. Right. Going deep. That hasn't worked yet today. And a penalty flag comes in as that was incomplete intended for Jenkins. They tried that play five or six times. They finally get the penalty on Roberson. And Roberson, two times they've tried it. They tried it three times in a row to start the ball game. Yes, 34 the defense. 15 yards for previous spot. Automatic first down. Well, they get the fire zone, and what it does is even if you're going to go three deep zone, going down to that end of the field, it's man to man coverage on the outside. Once your zone is threatened, Avery Roberson having to take Darnell Jenkins man to man. And right there, that's going to be a nice pass interference play for Miami. Second time that John Tenuta's defense has been called for a penalty on that. I don't know where you stand, Andre. I know that college football likes to continue to, to separate itself with the rules from the NFL, but I would like to see that rule change because it's almost like you give an excuse to the defense to just reach out and oh, grab yeah. somebody yeah. and take a penalty on a bomb. I think there's got to be more of a penalty on pass interference calls. I, I'd like to see it be a, become a spot foul. Greg Cooper on the call on first and 10, and he gets maybe three. Philip Wheeler made the initial hit as we bring Aaron Andrews in down on the field. Dave, we mentioned today what a special day it is for Miami offensive coordinator Patrick Nix going up against his former team. Well, keep in mind, Georgia Tech quarterback Taylor Bennett was very, very close to Nix during his time at Tech. And, you know, it was very hard for Nix to come and tell Taylor, I'm leaving now and I'm going to an opposing school. The two Techs frequently Taylor Bennett texted Patrick Nix right as soon as they had their baby a couple weeks ago. They texted this week, so both for both guys, very special day. And he did not want it to be a distraction for his former players. As Cooper has the first down and more pushed out of the 48. Now he told us yesterday yeah. and lived up to that promise. He was not going to go approach any of the Georgia Tech players before the game. He would talk to him after the game. He had his hugs uh, for the coaches, but stayed away from the players. Yeah, it was tough on him, you know, just having to tell Taylor Bennett. And they were very, very close offensive coordinator as well as uh, quarterback. And you see him here. A lot of handshakes and hugs between uh, Patrick Nix and the coaching staff of Georgia Tech guys that he's played in and coached in a lot of football games wasn't there the exchange with uh, Chan Gailey the head coach at Georgia Tech. Nix played at Auburn and Auburn is our uh, ESPN primetime uh, game against uh, Arkansas. Kirby Freeman in the game at quarterback and he's going to throw deep for Shields. And Shields can't come up with it. Pass a little bit too long. Word Daniels on the coverage. Well, they're going to go back and look at this film tomorrow and just talk about all the missed opportunities that they had to complete passes down the field. Receivers running open. And all you got to do, you have about three of those a game. Miami's had about six 
and they've had not hit on one. They had gotten bailed out on two occasions where there have been pass interference calls. But boy, when you have those types of shots, Dave, you like to hit at least two out of those three. If you're Bernie Kosar, Gino Toretta, Vinny Testaverde, Jim Kelly. Frustrating watching it. All the great quarterbacks at Miami. It's been a struggle at that position for the last handful of seasons since Ken Dorsey left. Zellner on the catch. And you know, Randy Shannon, Kyle Wright has had three different offensive coordinators. Randy Shannon has recruited uh, some good quarterbacks uh, to come into this program, and Kirby Freeman is a, a junior. But that's a position of weakness right now at Miami and has been, again, since the departure of Dorsey. Yeah, you, know, you look, you talk about Kirby Freeman. He actually started the year at quarterback for Miami, and they gave way to Kyle Wright, but uh, he may be the guy next season that lines up under center for the Canes. Largest, make that longest pass play today, is 11 yards. It's a third down and three right now at the 45-yard line of Georgia Tech, and they did not get the playoff. Quarter comes to an end. No offense in the third for Miami. Georgia Tech chewing up yards on the ground. Two rushing touchdowns by Tech quarterback Taylor Bennett. And the Yellow Jackets looking to beat Miami for the third straight year, lead by seven. The Chase. Miami's Kyle Wright is the ACC leader in pass efficiency, but over the course of his career, very inefficient in the fourth quarter. Might need to make a play here on third down and three. Little play action, and he's going to keep, and he's got the first down. And how about that? Taking it to Phillip Wheeler, knocking him back a few yards. That's a quarterback running over a pretty good linebacker, and I do say run over for a guy like Phillip Wheeler. It's going to open up. You get a crosser with a tight end, going to cross from this side of the formation, following Kyle Wright from right to left, but he makes his mind up. He's going to run it. Watch this. Lower the boom on Phillip Wheeler. Hmm. Well, Wright is about 225 pounds. Wheeler about 230. Get a little leverage and uh, you win the battle. So first down at the 39-yard line. Cooper with a big hole, and he breaks to the outside. And bumped out after 15 yards at the 24-yard line. Cooper, true freshman from, Cooper, from, from Memphis, Tennessee. Watch the vision on the part. Cooper right here. He's going to start this way. Watch it right here. Side cut. And now look at the running lane that he has. Great vision on the part of a young player. He was playing high school football last year. Amazing cut and adjustment by Craig Cooper. Maybe inspired after seeing that Oklahoma State score. That's yeah. where his dad played. And he almost went there. Went to prep school last year. Ends up at Gets decent yardage here on first down. Picks up four. Tripped up by Shane Bowen. Now Miami and Patrick Nix, the offensive coordinator, finding a little with Gray Cooper at the tailback position. They've had some success with Chambry McNeil. Long touchdown run, and now they turned it over to another. Gray Cooper. Javaris James, who coming into this game. Uh, was their leader at that position, not getting a lot of action today. Well, that was our software for the day. That mental chess match between Patrick Nix and John Tenuta. Cooper again, big hole up the gut. And it closed at the 16-yard line, a couple of yards shy. Miami first down. Miami's found a little uh, rhythm of its own. Georgia Tech making some adjustments. Guess what? Patrick Nix having some success running the football between the tackles with the true freshman. Good drive for Cooper, averaging over eight yards a pop. Miami's first trip inside the red zone today. Their touchdown came outside the red zone on McNeil's touchdown scamper, and he's in the game at tailback on third down and two. Well, I follow big uh, Jarrell Mabry right here. And they do. And he gets belted short of the first down at the 15-yard line by Gary Guyton. What do you do now if you're Miami? I think you go for it right here. Guyton, this hole closed fast. You're going to see the big fellow go in and block here, and they follow it with a tailback in McNeil, but it closes. Look at all the bodies showing up right there around the football. Great job of team defense by Georgia Tech. They pulled their best offensive lineman left guard, Andrew Bain, that time and everything. And they only got a yard, and Miami is going for it on fourth down and one. Had to run the big fella. Kyle Wright and a quarterback. Nope. It's going to be Franklin. 
And inside the 10-yard line is McNeil. McNeil on fourth down and one. That's been their best offense. Fourth down, either fake a punt or run it on fourth down and one. And Jones with a tackle on McNeil downfield. How much success have they had with McNeil in this football game? I'd give him the ball a little. You know, right here, they just kind of clear it out, and you see him get his pad level down. Nice stutter step, and right back north and south. Doesn't waste a lot of time. Oh, but, how about that right oh, there? Wait a minute. D.J. Jones took it out of his arms before forward progress was stopped. If I'm Georgia Tech, I'd call a timeout to challenge that. Absolutely. That looked like he just took the football from it. That should be Georgia Tech ball. Well, forget about it now as they snap it. Cooper gets hammered at the seven-yard line. Another big lick by Guyton. Well, let's take a look at this. D.J. Jones, the senior strong for Georgia Tech, coming up to make the tackle, but he's tackling the football. That ball is out. It goes over to Jones at the ground. That should have been a takeaway for Georgia Tech. Instead, a second down and goal for Miami. Can't challenge it once. Boy, I'm the yelling. Snap. I am yelling, screaming at the coaching staff, trying to get them to, to throw the flag, get a timeout, anything I can do. Right, fakes, gets inside the five, down to the four-yard line. Miami looking to make this a game with just over 11 minutes left in this game. Drive that the Hurricanes have put together in this football game. Two third down conversions, one fourth down conversion here, and still with the football and moving as we get to third and goal to go. Kind of like what Georgia Tech did in this half. Running plays, eight straight rushes by Miami. And now a third down and goal at the three. Right to the air. The fade is there, and Shields makes the catch. Miami touchdown. Now this is what we call a fade stop, where you throw it at the back shoulder or the back of the helmet of the wide receiver, Sam Shields. This is an excellently placed football on the part of Kyle Wright. The defender's trying to work up the field so much, and kind of cut you off that you throw it behind him your receiver can make the adjustment and not the defensive back if he comes through him it's going to be pass interference a well-thrown football and a better catch on the part of Sam Shield although this play is under further review did Shields come up may not have had possession when he hit the ground you've got to maintain possession when you hit the turf even in the end zone I'll tell you initially and it wasn't even a question in my mind that it was a touchdown pass. We'll take a closer look. Nice, well-thrown football. Nice adjustment. Hard well, that, to tell if he has possession. Close. That was close. I think it's, it's going to be one of those where it's tough to overrule it, to overrule the decision made on the field. Right here, you see Sam Shield. And the ball does kind of bobble. A, you know, right there, he's got control. And as he's sliding out of bounds, I think it comes and he juggles it a little bit. But he maintained possession long enough, in my opinion, for it to be a touchdown. The field is confirmed. Touchdown. Yeah, no doubt. And they went at Word Daniels, who was beaten for big plays twice by Maryland last week. Shields outfights him for the touchdown catch, his second of the season, yeah. and a chance to tie it now. We got ourselves a ball game. And if Miami really wants a realistic chance at playing for the ACC championship as the PAT is good, they've got to win this game here at home and get to 2-1 and one in the division with Florida State coming up next in Tallahassee. And Kyle Wright with his ninth touchdown pass of the season. Miami and Georgia Tech nodded at 14 apiece. Randy Shannon's team bounces back after two straight touchdowns by Georgia Tech. A 14-play, 73-yard drive. Touchdown pass by Wright. Now Darren Daly kicking it off. Jonathan Dwyer inside the 10-yard line. And Dwyer up around the 30 before he's wrestled down by Khalil Jones. Down to the field again. Here's Aaron Andrews. Hey, Dave, following Miami's touchdown, Randy Shannon walked over to where the defense was sitting, picked up the dry erase board, wiped clean of the plays, and started illustrating his own. Remember, he told us yesterday the hardest thing about being the new head coach 
was passing over the headset to new defensive coordinator Tim Walton. He was in the defense's face telling them, this is easy. Come on, this is huge for us. You've got to get this stop for us right here. Looks like the coach is still having problems letting me go. <laughs> Not surprised. Randy Shannon said he is competitive about everything. He wants Miami to be better overnight, even though other people are telling him it's going to take time. He does not want to hear that. Play fake for Bennett on first down. Going deep, and it is incomplete. Greg Smith got hit by Kenny Phillips, the safety, but that's the second catchable pass that Smith has been unable to hang on to. Boy, Greg Smith saw Kenny Phillips, and, and you know, all of a sudden, everything flashes before you. Tremendous pass rush here. And all of a sudden, right there, Greg Smith, an opportunity to make another catch, has had a couple of drops. Once you put it in the air, the defender is going to disengage you from the football, and that's exactly what Kenny Phillips does to Greg Smith. Bennett saying, what do I got to do? Keep fighting, son. Keep fighting. Back to the ground and choice. Nice tackle in the open field at the 34 by Sharpton. Gooden also there for Miami. You know, we talked about competitiveness. Randy yeah. Shannon, he said guys like Tavares Gooden thought they knew how to practice. Then one day he brought in Jonathan Vilma and DJ Williams of the Jets and Broncos respectively for a workout. He said after that, Gooden realized he had no idea how to practice. Yeah, he's figured out how to step his level of play up in practice and get himself ready for Saturday afternoons after watching a couple of pretty good ones that have come through Miami. Bennett to the air on third down and six, and someone does make a play for him. Caught downfield by Thomas. First down of the Georgia Tech 46, tackled by Willie Cooper. Well, you know, in the summer, in the spring, you spend all that time taking drops. Watch the delivery on the part of Taylor Bennett right here with the football. It's almost sidearm, and you have to make some throws like that sometimes. Different angles, different uh, release points of where the ball comes out right there, throwing the ball around Vegas Franklin. You know what? It doesn't matter where it comes from uh, as long as it's complete. Bennett's mother taught him football when he was growing up in St. Louis, Missouri. First down at the Georgia Tech 46. Choice to the outside. And he stepped out just inside Miami territory at the 49, pushed out by Sharp, gain of about five. Well, all of a sudden, the, the offenses for both these two squads have kind of awakened themselves and Moving the football down the field, Georgia Tech, a nice, impressive drive of their own right here in a response to the score of the Miami Hurricanes. So Taylor Bennett finding a rhythm to Shard Choice in rhythm as well. And Mike Cox kind of leading it all. Keep in mind what's at stake for Georgia Tech. Ten straight bowl games, ten straight winning seasons. They're at 500 coming into this game as Choice chooses his hole and gets close to the first down of the 44. Tackled by Daryl Sharpton. See where they spot it. Again, Mike Cox leading the way, the <laughs> senior fullback. Yeah, I'll tell you, if there's a game ball, I'm giving it to that guy right there. Watch the replay. You see him kind of line up offset right in here. That's that's uh, Mike Cox. And watch him lead the way right up in the hole and just kind of seal things off right there. Nice. Doesn't take a big block, but he's moving bodies, and he's had my respect since the first quarter when he met Kenny Phillips in the hole and pancaked him. I've had my eyes on him the rest of the game. And I'll tell you what, he is or may be the best blocking fullback in the country. A lot of people think Kenny Phillips is a top 10 pick coming out as a junior. Hasn't obviously decided yet what he's going to do, but Phillips, it's 215 pounds, 6'3", and you're right, Cox just nailed him. First down inside the Miami 45. Maybe going just right back where they left. Georgia Tech trying to avoid a one and four starting conference. Choice able to break to the outside. Big run by Choice getting around the other Miami safety, Willie Cooper. About 16 yards to the 28, and again, Mike Cox. Right, Mike Cox once again. Hey, we getting sick of it? Well, keep watching him. Watch him chop right here. Watch the block right here. Chop it down, and then he's pumping his fist. The, the play hadn't even ended, and he's pumping his fist because he's he knows he's thrown the block to free his running back choice to pick up the first down. He's laying on the ground, pumping that old fist. Boy, that's a guy that takes pride, a very unselfish football player, Mike Cox. Georgia Tech. It'll be a 30-second timeout. 
Two timeouts remaining for Georgia Tech. Mike Cox leading the way on the ground for the Yellow Jackets, blocking for choice. Bye, hon. Find us a good one. Bye. With two million vehicle listings to choose from on cars.com, you can find the right car for you. There it is. Find the right car for you. Cars.com. <laughs> Ooh, the never-ending pasta bowl is going on. Oh, you didn't know? No, no, I had no idea. <laughs> Olive Garden's never-ending pasta bowl with new smoked mozzarella Alfredo. Pick any sauce and pasta combination, then another. Just $8.95. Have all you want. <laughs> if it's Halloween... It must be Saw. Saw 4. The games have just begun. October 26th. Hockey's newest stars are busting the game wide open. NHL Center Ice on Direct TV. Follow your favorite team no matter where you live. Get up to 40 games a week from around the league. Plus select games in crystal clear HD. Just four payments of $42.25. Breakaway now. Order NHL Center Ice and never miss a moment. Visit directtv.com or call 1 800 GET SPORTS today. Hey, Mom. Where's Dad? In the backyard. Hmm. Just massage the laces and direct the traffic. Boys. Dad? Come on. With up to 14 games every Sunday on DirecTV's NFL Sunday ticket, I can watch every game and every player. Maddie here is like family now. Always warning the lefty. You gotta be kidding me. Look, Maddie, he loves you. Maddie? Brutal. Bring home all your favorite players with NFL Sunday ticket. Order now and get super fan for free. Only on DirecTV. ESPN's College Football is presented by Cars.com. Find the right car for you. Cars.com. And in part by Olive Garden. When you're here, you're family. That's my game right there. That's it. Push him away. Leave me. Nino Brown style. That's how I end it right there. Leave me. Maximo Gomez Park, informally known as Domino Park. And depending on the day, you might be able to catch Hyman Roth there on occasion. 8.36 to go here in the fourth with a game tied at 14. First down for Georgia Tech on the Miami 29. Choice. Powers to the 26. Gooden downs him along with Phillips after a gain of three. Well, you talk about a guy like Mike Cox. They're paying fullbacks a lot of money these days. The guys that can block and lead the way. Lorenzo Neal, uh, Vontae Leach for the, for the Houston Texans. Guys that can kind of secure the corner for running backs. Unselfish players can catch the ball out of the backfield. That guy there is going to have a chance and an opportunity to play on Sundays. Trust me. Josh Nesbitt in the game at quarterback and choice in the second half has 132 yards 186 for the day 30 carries Nesbitt has been successful running the ball and he's trying to get around the linebacker Sharpton and he does what body control along the sideline they say that he stepped out at the 23. Now he's going to step out about three to four yards short of the first down marker but how about the speed of the true freshman Josh Nesbitt right here you see him just out running the linebacker to the corner mm. Daryl Sharpton there he stepped out, stepped clearly out with the left right foot. there yeah just right out on the edge. Oh boy, I'll tell you, angle and everything by Sharpton and the young fella able to outrun him. Hey, Lauren, the shoulder on the defensive back. To the sideline goes Nesbitt. Bennett back in for a big third down and three at the 22. I'm going to tell you, you talk about, well, maybe he should know where he is on the football field. He did one heck of a job just getting away from Daryl Sharpton. So. They're going to review where he stepped out of bounds. Just kind of watch him. It was the left foot. It was not yeah. the right foot. It was the second foot, so it might be an additional yard here. Yeah, you watch him right here along the sideline. Not that one. That's the one right there. 
as they're reviewing. I think they got it right. Where to spot it. I think they got it right as well. Based on where the spot is. Or maybe they're reviewing it to see if indeed they called it right and yeah. he was in bounds. So but that's it. It's clearly out of bounds right there. Right on the white, on the chalk. Good job with the camera. So it'll bring up a third down and short. All right, do you have had success with Nesbitt running the football? Do you do a little option here, or do you just hand it up choice, or do you let Bennett throw the ball here on third down and three? This is what I'd do. I'd bring Nesbitt back in the football game, and I'd, I'd allow him to read things up front. You know, whether you hand it off underneath, if everybody goes crashing down, you know that he has the speed to pull it and get to the edge to pick up the first down. That's the direction I would go in right now. He seems to have some confidence right After now. Review. The ruling on the field is confirmed. Ball will be put in play at the 22-yard line. Yeah, he seems to have a rhythm running the football. His confidence has grown, and uh, I'd turn it over to him. The only thing is Taylor Bennett has two rushing touchdowns on bootlegs today. They're going to keep that element of surprise. And it's going to be Bennett yep. under center. Third down and three. So much for my plan. Watch the football. You can watch it right there where that guy goes. So movement along the line, but no penalty flag. Here's the bootleg that worked earlier in the half. It doesn't that time as Bennett was being chased by Calais Campbell. First time we called his name and the pass incomplete. Fourth down and three. Yeah, a guy that's been drawing a lot of double teams this season, which allows some of the other guys on that defensive front of Miami to make some plays. He is a great football player, been compared to uh, the great Ted Hendricks who played at the U some time ago. Set a state record in high school. 57 sacks, Calais Campbell. Travis Bell has missed three times this year. He is the ACC leading scorer. A 39-yard try to try to give the Yellow Jackets the lead again. Snap was high. But it doesn't matter. The kick good by Bell and Georgia Tech takes a three-point lead. That's a chip shot for Bell. He's he's been good from 51 yards this season, so that that's pretty much a chip shot for him. Georgia Tech knocked off Miami at the Orange Bowl two years ago when the Hurricanes were ranked third. They're unranked this year. Georgia Tech though leads by three again. Back here in Miami, Florida. Might be time for a little coffee. Who knows how long this game might go. <laughs> might be like uh, Hawaii. A little, little wake-up call, State. right? Last night. Georgia Tech's true freshman Scott Blair kicking off to Ryan Hill. He'll pass the 20 and across the 25. Back to the studio and Reese Davis. Illinois and Iowa guys. Illini made a quarterback change. Eddie McGee driving his team for the win. Under 90 seconds to go. McGee, plenty of time. Firing and picked off. Brett Greenwood making the interception for the Hawkeyes. Iowa had lost eight straight Big Ten games. Watch Greenwood, number 30 in the middle of your screen. Just waiting, waiting. McGee to take a bump. And Illinois falls 10-6 to the Hawkeyes. And Michigan coming to Champaign next week. Yeah, may have gotten caught looking down the road with Iowa losing eight straight in the Big Ten. Illinois caught looking at, uh, down the road at Michigan next weekend, and all of a sudden you forgot, rolled your helmet out there, and the Hawkeyes uh, caught you by surprise. And a personal foul on Miami, so instead of starting at the 25, they're going to be back around the 13-yard line to start this drive. They're making things a little more difficult to get themselves uh, at least tied up in this ball game. Sean Bray McNeil, true freshman who has a touchdown today for Miami, gets the call here on first down, gets away from Wheeler, but then Guyton with the tackle two yards downfield. What's it going to take for Miami to come back and either tie or win this game? Well, there's still enough time to run the football, do some things that that uh, where they stay within the game plan coming in. They wanted to run the football, establish the line of scrimmage with over seven minutes left. They can still do that. Miami has been able to run the ball successfully, especially on that last drive, one with eight straight running plays before that touchdown pass by Kyle Wright. 
Randy Shannon told us Wright is his guy. We have seen Freeman, but that's just for specific plays. A nice play by Daryl Richard as Georgia Tech, the nation's leader in tackles for loss, gets another one. Our guys on that side of the field, Daryl Richard, Daryl Roberson, uh, Michael Johnson, all have played some pretty good football. And every time the ball's been run to that side of the formation, uh, they've kind of shut things down. And now Miami finding themselves in third down and long. Boy, this is going to be some, uh, this is tough. This is where Patrick Nix, the offensive coordinator, wanted to stay out of these types of situations where they were third down and long against this tricky Georgia Tech defense. Shotgun for Kyle Wright on third down and seven. Wright in trouble, and he's going to go down. Dropped after Anthony Barnes hit him at the 14-yard line. Three and out for Miami, and the Hurricanes have to punt. Right, Georgia Tech's starting to feel it. The big fella there that's leading the way, Mike Cox, he's been a huge difference in the second half of this ball game, allowing Georgia Tech to establish the line of scrimmage and run the football effectively. Bosher gets the kick away, another short kick. He has not had a great day. Fair caught at midfield by Evans. All right, it is battle royal time, and it just seems, Andre, like right now nobody wants to win this thing. Cole yeah. Brennan had... Good numbers, but also had the four interceptions yesterday. Uh, how many guys you got left in your Heisman battle? We have eight. We've got about eight weeks left, and we'll get down to the, the, the last one, which may end up being our Heisman winner. But you see here, this is the last eight. Richard Mendenhall with an outstanding performance last week. Not sure about that this week. Darren McFadden, guys will drop off. You can get on there, but uh, you got to stay is the key. Choice on first down. And good job keeping his balance and staying in bounds. Picked up six yards before he stepped out. Back to the studio and Reese. All right, guys, Baylor in Kansas. The Jayhawks coming off that thrilling victory over Kansas State. Baylor and Kansas tied at three until Marcus Herford takes the ensuing kickoff and sprints 88 yards. That would put the Jayhawks on top. But they are once again in a weather delay as they were at the start. The number 20 Kansas up 10-3. to three. Midnight Madness, uh, so to speak, now in college basketball starting yesterday and all these basketball schools having success this year in football, including Kansas. And there's a first down carry by Tashar Choice, and for the third straight week, he has 32 rushes and almost 500 yards over the last three games. Hey, I'm going to step out on the edge. With five minutes, 22 seconds left in this ball game, I'm going to say he goes past 32 carries today. Gee, you think? <laughs> when, when do you want to take a guess that he's going to get number 33? What do you think? Hey, I'm guaranteeing it. All these guys guaranteeing stuff this week. Javorski Lane at A&M guaranteeing yeah. they're going to go to Texas Tech and win a football game. Hey, how about just go out and play? That game part of our ABC regional package at uh, 3.30 today. Choice pummeled on carry number 33. Tackle made by Calais Campbell. Minimal gain. Remember, too, what Georgia Tech is doing with really a, a makeshift offensive line. Only seven healthy offensive linemen for Chan Gailey's team this week. They're getting it done. Yeah, they are. I mean, they went in at halftime, made the, the adjustments needed offensively to really get themselves going. Came in averaging 199 on the ground. Struggled in the first half of this football game. And they came out of that locker room, and it has been a different Georgia Tech football team. Miami went three and five in the ACC last year in danger of dropping to one and two this year as Choice gets three down to the 36 yard line tackled by Campbell. But they're within Travis Bell's range right now for a field goal try with third down coming up four minutes to go each team with two timeouts remaining. I'd stay right on the ground go right back to, to Shard Choice allow him to run the football keep working that clock and you know, he's popped a couple of them Mike Cox has thrown some tremendous blocks play before Trey Dunman has uh, he threw a nice little kick out block on the edge stay right on the ground protect the football with the shard choice over 200 yards rushing today for choice 
Bennett instead will throw on third and seven, and what a grab adjusting for the ball at the 25-yard line is true freshman D.J. Donnelly for the first down. I'll tell you what, that's having some confidence in your quarterback right there, Taylor Bennett. Georgia Tech came to Miami, Dave, to win the football game. Right here, nice curl route, and it's thrown on the outside shoulder. You'll watch the defender end up inside. He throws the ball on the outside shoulder. Nice placement of the football away from the defensive back, which allows for the completion. When you talked about coming to win the game, that's got to be a confidence builder for that young oh, man. absolutely. And for your entire team when you're struggling at one and three in the ACC coming in. Clock continues to run. Choice on first down, nothing there. Gobbled up by Good. Miami saving its two timeouts. Florida State is up next on the road for the Hurricanes. Georgia Tech unlikely, but still possible to win the division. But tell you what, that's the surprise right now, Virginia. Nobody gave them uh, a chance to really have the type of success that they're having this year. Virginia Tech right now up uh, big on Duke today. Both teams sitting there atop the Coastal Division standings at five and one and undefeated in uh, in conference. And Boston College leading the Atlantic at three and zero, oh, but don't sleep on Wake Forest three and one after their win on Thursday night against Florida State, a game seen on ESPN. Georgia Tech taking time off the clock, flag down might be a free play, perhaps offside as Grant takes it to the 25, back to the line of scrimmage. McCray on the stop, but. Miami probably just gave Georgia Tech five yards. McCray was the one who appeared to be offside well, after, uh, before he made the tackle. Excuse me. And if I'm Taylor Bennett, I'm in the huddle. We'll get the call here first. Offside. 54 of the defense. Five-yard penalty. Second down. And you get yourself five free ones here. But if I'm in the huddle and I'm Taylor Bennett, I'm going to stretch this snap count out. And you've got to express that to the offensive line and those guys. Hey, I'm going to keep it a little bit long, try to eat up as much clock as I possibly can. I may hold you a little while, but sit in there. Do not jump and hurt us. I want to work the clock. Randy Shannon calling a timeout. If Georgia Tech gets a touchdown, it'd be awfully tough for Miami to win the football game, but a field goal and keeps it a one possession game. So second and five coming up. One more timeout remaining for Miami. Let's take a peek again at Andre's Battle Royal. Darren McFadden going to play in prime time against Alabama. And seems like a lot of people saying that, uh, excuse me, against Auburn, Auburn, mm -hmm. Arkansas, uh, coming up tonight on ESPN. Right. And it seems like a lot of people are already writing off McFed. No, no, I, there's no way. I think he's the actual leader in the Heisman race right now if you really had to, to pick a guy. But a couple of guys making some, some first-week appearances. Graham Harrell from Texas Tech on there for the first week uh, has had an outstanding season, thrown for a bunch of yards and, and uh, touchdown passes as well. And he could, uh, he could be well on his way of making some noise in the Heisman race. Is this a year where a, a guy like Glenn Dorsey has a better chance to win it as a defensive player for LSU? I think so. I don't think there's a guy that is aside from Darren McFadden that actually has kind of uh, pulled away in this race. It's anybody's race to the finish in terms of the Heisman Trophy this season. Here's Grant and Grant has the first down to the 12-yard line. They will stop the clock to move the sticks. And only one more timeout remaining for Miami. Well, Miami right now just kind of even hoping to get the football back. They need a stop right here, at least a field goal attempt by Georgia Tech. And uh, they've got to stop them, go down and get a score pretty quick. But I'm, I'm not sure they even get the football back. And Randy Shannon calls his final timeout. Well, Chan Gailey, we mentioned earlier in the contest that he's done a good job recruiting, but obviously fans in Atlanta have wanted to see more wins. His record is 40 and 30. He's in his sixth year, but he has several years remaining on his contract. But uh, folks in uh, Atlanta not happy with uh, the fact that, yeah, they're going to bowl games and have 10 straight winning seasons, but barely finishing above 500. But you'd think, though, you'd silence your critics after uh, going to the ACC championship game last year. But it, uh, the rumors have started up again, but this might silence them another win in Miami. This will be three straight wins over Miami and you know, Tenuta, uh, the defensive coordinator for Georgia Tech, big reason why they've been able to beat Miami. 
two years in a row, now perhaps three straight years. Yeah, some of that frustration and it's losses that come against teams that they feel like are fans feel as though uh, Georgia Tech should be like last week's lost against against a Maryland team. Uh, a lot of fans felt like that's a ball game that Georgia Tech uh, should have won handedly and they did. They were defeated by Maryland last week and they come in here go on the road against Miami uh, with a big chance right now to put this one away. A handful of years since uh, Georgia Tech has been able to beat Georgia. Their arch rival is a choice gets maybe a yard. Miami cannot stop the clock right now. The only thing that can stop the clock is a touchdown or a first down. Well, two years ago, Miami was number three in the country. Calvin Johnson went wild, had six catches and Reggie Ball with the go ahead rushing touchdown in the fourth quarter. And an interception by Davis with under two minutes to go. And since that game, Miami's record is just 12 and 10, and maybe 12 and 11. And Georgia Tech just going to take a knee on second down. And again, Miami cannot stop the clock. Oh, it's going to run. And maybe another kneel down, and this one's going to be over. Randy Shannon should have held on to his timeouts and forced Georgia Tech to at least hand the ball off, but he didn't. And now all they got to do is snap it, take another knee here on third down, then they'll have a decision on fourth down. That was my favorite formation. That victory formation. Just take a knee, let's ride off into the sunset. There might be a three or four second difference in the play and game clock after this running play by choice. He's down to the 11 yard line. It's going to be about two seconds difference. And with that play, it might kind of uh, equal itself out. Just let it run out. Take the penalty. Run one more. And well, they're saying it's a it. seven second difference yeah, between the game and, and play clocks. And Changale is going to take it down and then call a timeout. And you would assume run one more play and even if they don't get the first down Miami's only got a couple of seconds left on the change of possession. You don't want to risk attempting a field yeah. goal and have it blocked. No, not at all. And you just kind of run one more and that's it. Georgia Tech has run 40 plays in the second half and many of those running plays by Tashard Choice 37 carries overall in the day for 204 yards. Look at the last three weeks for a guy playing with a bad hamstring. Meanwhile, Miami's only run 20 plays in the second half. And only one pass play over 10 yards today. 11 yards, their longest wow. pass play. And you're used to seeing guys, Michael Irvin, making plays down the sideline and, you know, uh, Reggie Wayne, guys like that. When you look at Miami, it's, it's not quite back there yet, but is there any doubt? that Randy Shannon's going to get it back to the, the respect that it once was. There's no doubt in my mind he is going to recruit. He is going to be a very successful coach here at the U. So fourth down and nine, eight seconds remaining, and Georgia Tech will go for it. They can't take a knee because they wouldn't get the first down. The clock would stop for the change of possession, so they actually have to run a play. And if they don't get the first down, clock will stop, and then Miami, provided there's time left, will be able to run a play. And Bennett going to throw here on fourth down and nine. And he throws it away, and time expires. He did a good job waiting for the clock to run out and then throw it away. And the game is over here in Miami. Hurricanes did not even get the ball back. Georgia Tech beats Miami third straight year, second straight win at the Orange Bowl. All right. Bennett took a shot, too, after he threw that football out of bounds on that last play. Yeah, but you know what? He put it up uh, and it stayed in the air long enough for the time to run out. You know, you don't mind taking one of those shots. Just kind of protect yourself. But a heck of a job by that young man today. Two rushing touchdowns for Bennett. Georgia Tech comes from behind to beat Miami 17-14. Georgia Tech now two and three in the conference. Miami is one and two with a date with Florida State 
next week. Seminoles coming off a loss to Wake Forest. College football scoreboard presented by Acura coming up next for Andre Ware. Aaron Andrews, our entire ESPN crew. I'm Dave Pash. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. So long from the Orange Bowl, only two games for Miami played left in this facility.